Good morning, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome to Sewing Street. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome all my lovely little early birds. We have got the most fantastic early bird special for you today. Um, some of you may have seen this on our show before, the Tilda Charm Pack Lazy Days, but definitely at a much bigger price than what we've got it on today. If you haven't seen it before, you're gonna get two of each of these blocks. And there you go, you can see, $11.99 today. It's usually $14.99. And that is a fantastic price, the $14.99, so you can just see this additional saving is brilliant. And the colours and the colourways on this, I'm going to try and just move this up a little bit there. But look at all these different colourways. So what's really good with these is you're getting two of each colour. So you're getting two of 20 different designs, all for EPP or whatever project you're wanting to do. Because sometimes in your uh, charm packs that you get, you don't actually have two of the one you want, because that's the one that's the the star of the show, if you like, and you only get one of them. But here, you're getting two of every single design. Really great way to have a little bit of the, the well, it's the whole of the Tilda Lazy Day collection. Really great, look at that. These are just brilliant. And I love, oh, look, but what I love as well, the different colors on how they do it compared to sort of, that was the one I was looking for. Look how different they look just with that pop of color. And the great thing about a charm pack is that it all works so beautifully together because you've got that synergy of color on how they've designed it. You can see the purple in that color there is the same as the purple in the flowers. So it just coordinates so beautifully all the way through. And all these different designs, look at these. And this is what we were showing when we had the Fat Quarter Bundle. You could do some echo stitching around there if you're wanting to practice your free motion quilting. Really nice way of doing it. And again, look at that in a totally different colorway. It just works really, really well there. So such a great collection. I'm trying not to undo, there we go. Look at that one. I have to say, me and my blues, I love my blues. And then we're getting on to the, the, the Pierce de resistance of the collections with all these blues. So you've got 45 inch squares in that charm pack. Absolutely lovely. And it's got that gorgeous Tilda quality on it as well. Really great way to be able to try Tilda if you haven't used it before. Getting a whole of the collection in there. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous collection there. And for $11.99. We're never going to be able to do that again. And as we know, once a charm pack's gone or a layer cake's gone, unfortunately, we're not able to bring them back because they only print them the once. And I'm, I'm actually not sure of anywhere else that's actually selling these, um, at the, certainly not at that price. So it's definitely a wonderful, wonderful deal today and such a great product. Who can't go wrong with a charm pack? And it's a great way to start your Friday morning. Nice and festive and bouncy and look at all those colors. It's just that wonderful spring feeling. It's wonderful. Really great product there. They're lovely. And of course, where we are at the moment, we're doing as well as we can on deliveries. Everybody's got to be very safe and keeping up with social distancing. So we will get these out to you as quickly as possible. Um, and we should be getting that to you in the next couple of days. Really great products. If you have got that in your basket already, well done. Welcome to our early birders. Only got the one PNP all day today, so if you've already bought this, you've basically got free PNP all day then. So everything you buy, buy later in the day, you don't pay any further postage and packaging. Doesn't matter what you're buying through the day, whether it be a sewing machine or whatever, it's only that one PNP. And I've just had a stock notice, we've got less than 20 of these left. So if you, this is something you're interested in, less than 20 left at the moment, so don't hang around, that might go. But the great thing with these is what the, just look at these vibrant colors. Cause we had a collection on yesterday where I was saying that what works well is that if you pick out that gorgeous blue or that lovely pink, if you work that in with these colors, you then stretch this um, charm pack that little bit further by using something slightly cheaper with the, um, the coordinates. And it just works so beautifully. Just look at these colors. That I've definitely not seen Tilda at this price before. Absolutely gorgeous. These are, oh, I'm hearing that it's actually featuring very heavily in Cat's b and Look at that. I'm sorry, I keep going back to that. I think that is my favorite print from Tilda. But you can make, because the, the way they do the designs and everything, you've got the gorgeous orange there. That would go really well with any of our other orange collections. I'm just gonna move this over here to see. Oh, we've got an, a collection later. I'm just looking, that matches perfectly with that there. 
<laughs> but a really, really fantastic collection here. And charm packs, once they're gone, they're gone. Unfortunately, we won't be able to bring them back. So don't miss out. You always miss, uh, regret the fabric you leave behind. You always do. And such a great bargain to start your day with. Brilliant. So if you haven't shopped with us before, uh, well, first of all, if you want to stay in touch with us, you can get us on our Facebook page. So it's um, if you haven't used Facebook very often, you'll be typing in www.facebook.com forward slash Sewing Street TV. Um, and then we've got our website as well, which is www.sewingstreet.com. And I've got obviously our UK based call center, which is 0800 001 4433. Any questions you've got about the products, anything you want to know about deliveries, fantastic call center. They can answer all of your questions. So do drop them a call and they'll be able to help you with that. If it does take a little bit longer to answer the phone, just bear in mind we are in difficult times. So you may wait a few minutes more than normal. We're just doing everything to make sure everybody's nice and safe and doing the best that we can. Obviously, we've got our fantastic social media presence as well. You can catch us, as I've said, on the Sewing Street TV page. We also have the Sewing Street Fans page as well, which is a group on Facebook. So do check that one out. On Instagram, we've got Sewing Street. And then, of course, don't forget our YouTube page. That's all, The channel is called Sewing Street. And every single live feed and live broadcast that we've ever done, going back to Valentine's Day, right up until yesterday, is already on the page, um, on the channel. So you can go through and search our video section. But also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way then every time a new video arrives you'll get a notification and that way then you won't miss a thing, you won't miss a single product or a single demo. And any demo that we've got is then there forever and you'll always be able to go back and watch the demos so whenever you want to. Like we're doing our wonderful block of the week at the moment, we've got those as individual hours as well. So the last three that we've done and then today's one um, in about two days time that will then come out as a separate hour so you don't have to look through it, that's as a separate hour for you. So really lovely channel that as well on YouTube, make sure you check that out. So next we, I'm so pleased we've got all the early birds on here. And the good thing is, now that you're here nice and early as well, I'm able to show you this fabulous Amelie quilt. Now I'm gonna try and do this without knocking any of this gorgeous fabric off. Now this is not the complete quilt because I haven't added the extra, um, extra row on the bottom. But look how beautiful this quilt is. This is made from a Moda uh, layer cake called, is it the front porch? Called front porch. And just look how vibrant these colors are. I've used white fabric um, to do my little, what you call the windmills on here. But unfortunately, we don't have very much white fabric left at the moment. So if you are looking for a coordinating color to go with that, you may need to check back in a day or two with regards to getting the white. Otherwise we have loads and loads of different colors on the website. So have a look through the, um, the layer cake with me and then have a look online if there's a colorway that you'd prefer. Um, because maybe you don't want to use the white. Maybe you'd like to use a light gray or an, a dark gray or even, even a bright orange or a blue or a navy. And we've got all of those fabulous colors online available for you so you just need to go and check on the website for that but now I'm not going to take this out because as you know once you've taken a layer cake out you physically can't get them back so I'll show you what we're getting today you're going to get oh excuse me <coughs> sorry oh <clears throat> you know when you're talking and you just get a little frog I really apologize sorry about that so what we've got now is we've got this fabulous layer cake and this fantastic pattern of um, how you actually make this quilt. And what is really good is not only do you get the project, the pattern for this project, but you also get um, the you get f uh, six different sizes in order to make this quilt. So you can make a crib size, which uses 24 squares. You can make the lap size, which is the one that I've just shown you, which I've used a full layer cake for, which is 42 squares. You can make a twin, which you'll need 88 squares. You can make a full size quilt, which is 72 inches by 88. You'd need 100 squares for that. If you want to make a queen size quilt, which is 88 by 96, that's 132 squares. And then a king size one, goodness me, you're going to be busy with that one, that's 170 squares. And then each one of these layer cake squares is what they're referring to there. So if you're looking for a 
king size one, I think you're going to need just over four of these layer cakes in order to make it. Um, and then it tells you the background fabric, how much you're going to need. In order to get the background coordinating fabric with this, uh, you're looking to get an extra meter of fabric with that. Uh, they're saying it's an American yard, but we obviously use meters because then we've just got a little bit left over at the end. So I demoed three of these, three of these different quilts on the 29th of March. So um, I'm going to do a very quick overview of how you actually make this quilt. But if you do want to, th this is the great thing about our YouTube page. If you want to go back and you're thinking, oh, how did they do that? 29th of March. I can't remember what time, but just scroll through there and you'll see that I've made this quilt up as a very full demonstration to be able to show you how to do that. So let me show you very quickly the colours on here because I think it's quite... Actually, I'm going to show you in the quilt. That makes more sense because the colourway on this is really lovely. Really spring and bright. But look at this, even as a baby quilt, it's a lovely size. So this, you can just see all those gorgeous navies and the beautiful reds and oranges, and but they just work so beautifully together. I'm sorry, it's actually not reds, it's a really bright orange. And that gorgeous turquoisey teal. And you can see why I chose white on this, but you can see like a light sea blue would work beautifully in this as well. Or a navy or something. That's where your design comes into it. And sorry, I'm just looking at that little green one there. Just look at these. They're just so cleverly done. So the colorways on this are fantastic. Really, really lovely little product that. Um, and that has got six by six where your, your actual finished quilt will be six by seven. Now let's see if I can get this on without knocking anything over. Stay. Stay. Woohoo! So let me show you how you're going to make this. So when you start out, you're going to have, I'm going to put that just there. You're going to have your layer cake. Now you're going to need to use your imagination with me because I've already cut these up. So you're going to have your layer cake there. And then you're going to cut your layer cake in half. Oops. Oh, magic, if by magic. And then you're going to sew a white strip in the middle of your layer cake, but you're not going to put that one back on there because that would just be silly. Then you're going to take another one that you cut in half and you're going to attach that together. Now we're going to imagine, we're going to imagine that these are the same colors. Okay, this is where I said our imagination is going to have to come in here. Let me just get it sort of the same colors. And you're going to have sewn it together to look like that. Can you see they're exactly the same? Woo! Then you're going to cut them in half that way. And once you've cut them in half that way, obviously you can't use the same one. You're then going to take a second one and then you're going to sew those together and you're going to have a block that looks like that. And then you're going to trim that up to the required size and then you're going to follow the pattern on how to actually get that to be the exact um, size that it needs to be. And then you've got the very clear instructions on how you put that together to make the quilt. So, but have a check on the 29th of March, you'll be able to see exactly how I've done it. Um, and that then means, that's, that's where our YouTube channel comes in so handy, that you can then go back and check out any of the tutorials that we've got on. What? Oh my goodness, I'm just hearing now we've got less than 10 of these available now. So please, this is a fantastic quilt, really lovely colorway, something so bright as a gift or anything. It's a really nice project and I really enjoyed making this one. So less than 10, and if you can't get them there, once you've got rid of, once a layer cake's gone, again, you'll never get it again. You won't be get, able to get it back. And the great thing with this pattern is not only does it show you how to do what size you're getting on them, but it also then you can use the pattern later on to show you how to make all the different size quilts. So you can see that's, oh, I've got this upside down, forgive me. You've got the crib size, lap size, twin size, full size, queen size, king size. So this is not just a pattern for this quilt. This is a pattern for future quilts as well. And for different projects, you may want to buy just the pattern on its own is worth a fortune in my opinion. It's a really, really lovely design that. Wow, okay, stock update on our early bird. We have less than five of these available now. 
absolutely astonished, but I'm not surprised. That's the joy of being here nice and early with me. You'll be able to get your early bird then, and once they're gone, they're gone, unfortunately. But And then all of you got your one-day PNP. You've already paid your PNP for the day, so now you've got everything that you buy now for the rest of the day. You're not paying any more postage and packaging. What a great deal. Now, today's one of my most favorite shows I have done with you because every one of us, there's a little bit of stash out there. I know all of you have got a little bit of stash. If your partner is watching, you, you, you know nothing about this. Don't worry, shh, quiet. You don't need to hear anything. <laughs> Over here, we have got some amazing, phenomenal deals on a stash building collection here. We all have these colors in our lives and we've got them and we think, oh, I should get that. Now is your chance to do it. We have got the most fantastic colorways. I don't even know where to start. So we're gonna start, I think we'll start here. So this is, these are backings, but they're also just two meter big pieces of fabric. Really amazing collection this, and these are colors that are just gorgeous. You'll recognize that school gray. I've used that in all of my EPP, my FPP projects. It is stunning. It is gorgeous to work with. Really, really lovely. But we're gonna start with the ivory because I always love jumping ahead. This is two meters by 44 inches. Uh, so that's what, 78 inches by 44. Uh, once we've cut them up, you're looking at about 42 inches um, salvage to salvage. And for two meters of that, you're getting it for 12 pounds 46 for two meters. That is a saving of one pound 50. Now you cannot go wrong with that. Any form of saving that we're gonna make these days, chuck it in my basket, I'll take all my money. But that is two meters of the ivory there for 12 pounds 46. And it is lovely, I'm using this all of the time at the moment. So shall I open this up to see how much it is? The only problem with that is I've got to put it back together then. <laughs> so two meters, you can tell, I'm not, I need my lovely Susan here as my thing. So you can see it's absolutely huge. So that is about half of it. And I've only got it in half. So am I gonna open the whole thing like this? Let's see if I can do this. Folding this again is gonna be entertaining. But look at that, That's you can see I can't even get my arms wide enough to get it all in. It's a huge amount of fabric. And you're saving one pound 50 today buying the two meter pieces. Really, really great saving there. I will get this right. I'm determined my folding skills have already improved. They're just setting challenges for me now to make sure I can do this. I, I had a compliment in yesterday. Somebody very kindly sent a message into our Facebook on our Facebook page complimenting me on my folding. I'm so glad you noticed. Thank you. I am trying. And that's a great thing. If you want to message into the studio, send us a message on our um, Sewing Street TV page on the message function. Then we can read it out on air. If you've got any questions about the fabric or you want to see something that I've just gone past too quickly for you, drop us a message and we'll be able to help where we can. And next we have, what color is this? This is cr the cream, because the cream and the vanilla look very, very similar. So I'll just hold that up against the white so you can see it's a really subtle difference in the colorway there. Uh, that was the white that we showed earlier. This is now the cream that we've got. Isn't it just gorgeous? A really lovely, lovely cream. Because I do think sometimes it's quite hard to get the right cream, but I think that one is just really special. Really nice, that one. Again, £12.46 for two metres. You'll be saving £1.50 getting that um, little special that we've got on there for you today. Can't go wrong with that. But this is, without question, my favourite fabric that I have found this year. And I'm so glad we've got it on Sewing Street because this is called School Grey. And it's not, it's not, it's so vibrant. And I say vibrant, even though it's a gray, all of the colors that you put with it just pop so beautifully with it. Um, I'm just gonna even, I'm just gonna, I'm always jumping ahead and working. But even with the pastels, look how vibrant those pastels look against that gorgeous background. Absolutely stunning. And I'm gonna jump ahead again. Look at the yellows, even they pop against them. I haven't found a color that doesn't actually pop against this gray. And it is without question my favorite, favorite for color to, do, to work with at the moment. It's so, so good. Again, two meters of this, 44 inch wide, 42 usable once the salvage are off. That is uh, 12 pounds 46. 
Remember our one-day PNP, so if you've already got our fabulous early bird, you paid your PNP all day, so you're not paying any more postage. You're just getting great prices on these fabrics. And I, I just gave you a little bit of a teaser with our pastel colorway here. Just look at that. They just look like little sweeties that you want to eat, don't they? They are just beautiful. Really great spring summertime collection of colors there. Just gorgeous. But they do look like sweeties. You can just say, uh, is it that saltwater taffy that you get that come in all of these and little marshmallows that you can get in all these different colors? They're fa None of which are very good for you, but the fabric obviously is. Mm. So I'm going to show you now what, uh, how much a half meter is on this. So you've got five different colors there, half a meter of each. This is, what are we calling this, lemon? This is lemon. Really lovely, that one. So we have lemon and then we've got mint. Let me show you the mint. Oh, right. I will get this right. There we go. In and then. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely. I've got it in my ear going, and then fold that one in, and this one in. <laughs> it's brilliant. And then we've got, this is called Mint. Look at that. So this is now available as a bundle, five half meter pieces together. So you're getting two and a half meters of fabric there for $16.99. We've already done the lemon, and now we've got our mint. And then this one was called Pink. A very original, yes. So this is a lovely pink. And then we've got a nice powder blue as well. I'm not doing this correctly, but there we go. We've got a powder blue there as well, which is just beautiful. Really lovely color that. And then we've got the light lilac. Look at that. Really beautiful colorway there. So that is half a meter of each one, getting two and a half meters of fabric there. For $16.99. And if I do that, look at how beautiful they go together. The bundle was much neater before I played with it, but there we go. Oops. I'm loving all these new bundles we've got. I love these. The neutrals first. Now again, every single one of us, when you're looking for that right colour, these just work beautifully. So this one is cream. I think this one is nude. One of them's, I think this one's nude and that one's, is that ivory? Right, so it's nude, ivory, cream, and white. I've got those the wrong way around. So it's ivory, cream, white, and nude. I've got that the wrong way around there, sorry. Ivory, cream, white, and nude. So there we go, and you can just see. So this is the ivory. Again, these are half meters by 44 inches. And for any, even whatever quilt you're making, all of these colors are going to work because these are the neutrals that will literally go with every color. This is the cream colorway. And then we've got our white. And then our gorgeous nude. And I really like this nude. It's a lovely colorway. But all of these colors work so perfectly together. It doesn't matter what quilt you're making, all of those are going to work in your quilt. And that's what I was really excited about with this um, collections that we're doing today, because these literally are colors that you will use in virtually every project. And we're always looking for that little bit of white or a little bit of cream. And unfortunately, we can't all go out fabric shopping at the moment. So we wanted to make sure that the little bits that you might be short of, or little bits of things that you wanted to try, or you know, any form of mug rugs or anything like that, these make the most fantastic um, bases for your colors. So if you're doing any form of foundation paper piecing, these colors work really, really well and they work well together as well. I'm just looking at that, look at them together. Even together they go so well. What? Okay, this is astonishing. We have sold out of the two meter school gray. Sold out, it's gone. I'm not surprised because it is absolutely Gorgeous. I am so surprised. So shall I just put this under here? I'm going to take that home with me. Well, not in my bag. Oh, you're no fun. <laughs> so here we've got the yellow collection here. 
the core yellow fabrics. Brand new bundle today, half a meter of each four pieces for $12.99. Um, so what have we got at the top here? Is that lemon, corn yellow, gold, and sunshine. Oh, don't they just look like a field of the rapeseed at the moment as you're driving in? I've got this wonderful privilege of being able to drive in along some of the most beautiful countryside in the country. And it is just the rapeseed is out in force. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this colorway just makes me think of all of that because it just all these different shades are in there. They're brilliant. So this is the lemon. And then this is now the corn yellow, half a meter of each of these colors. And then we've got the lovely gold next. And you can just see how subtly these change, but even on their own, how beautifully they go together. And I know we've sold out of the school gray, but look how beautifully those go together. See that school gray, I can see why it's gone. So we'll let you know when that comes back into stock. And then we've got the sunshine. Doesn't that just scream good morning to you? We've got a little hint of the sunshine at the moment. Isn't it wonderful? The sun definitely came out this morning. And the great thing about driving in so early is the gorgeous sunrises. They're absolutely stunning. So that is our yellow core fabric bundle collection. Half a meter of each of those four colors, and that's for $12.99. Whole new bundle today, very exciting. Oh, my favorite colorway, the blues and the teals. Just look at that. Really beautiful colorway, that. I'm just thinking, has anybody ever heard of the Storm at Sea quilt? These colors would go really, really well with that as well. So I'm not too sure what we've called these all. So what's the top one? Is Peacock? Jade, oh, that's beautiful. Co Is that not Copen? Teal, oh, okay. Oh, and misty blue, isn't that just gorgeous? Really, really lovely color combination there. So this one is called, I've forgotten now, I'm sorry. This is called Peacock, just gorgeous. These are half meters in each of each, uh, giving you a two meter bundle there for $12.99. This is called Jade, just beautiful, isn't it? And this is a lovely dark teal. But, oh, it's just so, so unusual and really, really special. And then the last one is our misty blue. But you can just see how beautifully these go together. Nice colorway, that. And if anybody hasn't seen the Storm at Sea um, FPP projects, that would be beautiful, because what you do is you pick four or five different green, um, blues and you, put, so you marry them up with a white, and it's a foundation paper piecing project. Really lovely, that, so go and check that out. Oh, but look at these. Oh, they're just so rich. Look how beautiful these are. These are the Red Core collection. Absolutely beautiful, that. Half meter of each one again, four different fabrics there for $12.99. So what colors are we calling these? So this is red, very original, red. <laughs> this is crimson, but it is beautiful. It's so rich. Hot tomato, that's a nice name for a fabric there. Really lovely, that one. Oh, and then, oh which I think most of us have been having quite a lot of recently, the claret, darling. We've got the claret. <laughs> and you can see how beautifully well they work together there in that bundle. Just lovely. And I'm, I'm going to get this right eventually. There we go. Look at that. $12.99, four half meter pieces there and our lovely. And this is our last, is it, did you say that's our last one? Oh, this is our last new bundle. I was like, no, it's not our last bundle. We've got all those there. These are all bundles. This is our last new bundle um, exclusive to us today. Really loving all of those. Which one's your favorite? Come on, message in. Tell us which one your favorite is. I can't decide. I think the pastel might be my favorite at the moment. Oh, I'm hearing the pastel may very well be the favorite at home as well. You've all got such good taste, you lot. But the neutrals apparently are doing really well as well. Oh, I like it. How, how's the early bird? How's our early bird doing? Oh, don't, don't hang around. Don't hang around. So which one have we got next? 
the blues. Oh, look at these. So these we've had on before, but these are the core blue bundle. Look at those. Oh, they're just gorgeous. So let me get the Copen. Just Copen Marine Powder Blue and no, it's Peacock. Is that Sky? Powder blue, perfect. So we have our gorgeous Copen colorway. Oh, Cadet, not Copen. I've got Copen on the brain because of my Bargellos from yesterday. So that one's called Cadet. Really beautiful blue, that one. Again, you're getting half a meter of each of these in this bundle today. This one's Marine, just vibrant beyond words. It's so lovely. Powder blue. And then the Peacock. It's but what I want to, you know, I love doing multiple bundles. I'm just one of those people. Look how well those go together. Look, ooh, for an ombre, look at that. So obviously the one that we've got on the screen at the moment is only this bundle here. That is half a meter of each one of those. And the other colorway that I did, what did we call this one? The teals and blue, teals and blue bundle. That, so that we've had on a little while ago. So check that one out. But look how beautiful that is. And if you want these individually, make sure that's why I'm reading the names out to you as we go along. They are available by the half meter on the website. Um, if we buy the bundles, am I correct in thinking that these are cut pieces already at half meter? So if you bought two bundles, you, they will come as half meter pieces. So if you needed meter pieces, you can then go and order two units of the fabric individually. So that's the best way of doing it that way. Well, oh, so. Our next combination are these fabulous poplin stops, poplin spots. Let's try that again. These lovely poplin spot fabrics. This we've called the ocean fabric bundle. Half a meter of each one there, uh, giving you two and a half meters of fabric and they're coming in at $18.99. So let's see if I can get these colors here. Is that one salmon? That's all right. There's too many numbers and too many things. This is rose, so this is white dots on rose. Look at that. So lovely, that. And then we've got aqua. And then we've got, is this lilac? This is lilac. And this is now the pastel turquoise. Oh, it's beautiful, this, isn't it? And then the final one being the sky. But all, what I love about them is just look how well they go together. They just gradiate so perfectly in with that. And then you can match these with any colors you like. You can imagine highlighting the white dots by putting some white sashing between them as well, which would work really well. And we've got white and ivory by the half meter. Is it ivory or white by the uh, two meter bundles? Ivory, we, ivory and cream by the two meters. So those would work very, very well with that combination as well. Perfect. So this is what we're calling our sunset cork um, colorway here. Sunset core bundle there. So you're getting a half meter of each for each of these four colorways. And they're just so lovely. Look at that. So we've got this is is this no that this is sunshine again. Trying to bring you as much of the sunshine as we can. And it's this peach. This is such a nice color to work with, really nice. And then we've got our lemon again. And I have a funny feeling this one's very originally called orange. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to name all these different colors? So there we go, we've got those beautiful four colors together there, our sunset core fabric bundle, two meters, half meter of each for $12.99. Oh, I'm loving these. Oh, we've had a message in from Tracy. Good morning, Tracy. She's saying, good morning. She's saying all the fabrics are looking very delicious, aren't they? She loves the yellow group. So this yellow group, ooh. Oh, and she's saying, I'm doing a great job. Thank you so much, darling. That's lovely to hear. Really nice. Oh, I'm not sure. I think still the pastel's my favorite. I'm not sure. But then we're looking at, is it the green one next? Oh. I look at the pastels and then I look at that and I think, oh, maybe I don't like the pastels the best anymore. Look at those. 
Really, really, really lovely colourway that. Half a metre of each four of these. These are the Greens Core Fabric Bundle. Two metre bundle there for £12.99. So it's just such a great colour, this. What is this one called? This is Jade, yes. Oh, gorgeous. And then we've got the Emerald. I'm 80% sure that's right. And then we've got Mint. And then, of course, the very fancy Chartreuse, darling. The Chartreuse. Just look at those. Half a metre of each one of those. It just looks like a bit of a forest, doesn't it? With a little stream running through it. It's beautiful. Bringing a little bit of the outside in, aren't we? Oh, so am I doing this one next, I think? Yes. <coughs> oh, I have a little frog, forgive me. I don't know what's going on with my little tickle today. Apologies about that. So, <coughs> oh, <coughs> now I'm choking on my drink, sorry. So this is the Reds and Pink Core collection. Really beautiful, these. But look at that, doesn't that just make you think of a chocolate? Oh, a nice little chocolate covered strawberry. Doesn't that make you think of that? So this one we've called Hot Tomato. I love that. I'm certainly not sure I'd be putting um, chocolate over a tomato. I think somebody once said the um, intelligence is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. <laughs> Which I thought was very clever. So this one we've got, oh, this is called Bright Pink. And isn't it just beautifully bright there? So Hot Tomato, Bright Pink, and the Magenta there. Oh, <laughs> it reminds you of Rocky Horror, I suppose, doesn't it? That is just such a lovely colourway, that. Oh, is this called Brunette? Look at that. But it's not a dull brown either, because some of the browns, you know what I mean, you look at and you just go, meh. This is not like that at all. And just look how well they go together. This is the reds and pink core collection there. Half metre of each of those colours, giving you two metres for £12.99. Oh, I do like these. Oh. I'm hearing the neutrals have been really, really popular. But now we have our fabulous monochrome collection. So if you have missed out on our school grey in the two metre bundles, don't worry, we've got a bit of it in here. So this is the monochrome core fabric bundle collection, 19.99. There are six pieces here, six half metres of each, because I think monochromes are quite in. Just got to look at my shirt to see how the monochromes are going there. But the, you can just tell these are really do, are making a little comeback at the moment, doing just these very simple, basic, high contrast colours together. And they work really, really well. <clears throat> so this one I think is ivory. It's got that beautiful half metre of ivory there. Really nice. And that's why I'm loving this whole show today, because this is a great way for you to build your stash up and to be able to get some really lovely fabrics really great quality as well and just to build up those wonderful solids because most of us have got a smaller selection of solids but this is a really nice way of being able to do it because you're getting a lot of contrasting colors and different colors this is half a meter of black in the monochrome collection there and i think this is the white is it so this is the white half a meter of the white there for our monochrome collection today we've got our fabulous ever popular school gray Really beautiful, beautiful grey. Hmm? Oh, is this dark grey? Oh, it's not the school grey. I apologise. This is actually the dark grey. Oh, that is lovely as well. I've not seen that. That is lovely. Really nice half metre there. And then we've got our silver colourway there. Which just gives it a little bit of a lift. Because you can tell there, that's lovely. Nice high contrasting there. But the minute you pop that in... Look how different it looks. It feels so different then, just popping that colourway in. Really works that. And then we've got our lovely cream. Vanilla, sorry, not cream. And you can tell the vanilla and the cream are so similar, that's why I got them confused there. But it's got a slight hint of a yellow in it, in the vanilla. But it just is so lovely. And again, just look how that softens that whole collection there. 
because you've got the high contrast at the bottom and then those top two colors you can see without those it's nice but those you pop them in and it just brings that whole collection to life don't know who built it but well done you've got a great eye building this bundle is that our Haley? i think it's going to be our Haley as well but do you think Haley would recognize if every single one of these just ended up in my bag <laughs> I make myself sound like a kleptomaniac. I promise I'm not. I do buy the fabric. <laughs> so now this is the purple fabric bundle here, which I absolutely love that they put this light. Is that a cream in there? In the cream in there, because it just breaks it so beautifully there. Really lovely colorway there. So this is blush. Every time I see the word blush in a pink, I just want to go, the colours for my wedding are blush and bashful from, what was that, Barty Bartokomus? Oh gosh, I can't remember what TV show that was. There was a TV show once where somebody, a wedding planner, turned around and said, the colour of your wedding will be blush and bashful. <laughs> so this is the cream. Half a metre of the cream going with it. But it, it's nice that it gives you a bit of cream because it breaks it up so beautifully as well. This is your magenta again absolutely lovely that it's such a rich color it just feels like a grapey colorway as well it's really lovely that and then is this originally called purple there we go very original got that nice purple in there as well oh a very famous chocolate wrapper color purple oh i like that and you can figure out which one i mean so that is our lovely purples fabric bundle collection Two meters, you're getting a half meter of each one of those for $12.99. Gosh, we've got so many here, it's wonderful. We've got our Ditsy Stars by Rose and Hubble. Look how lovely they are as well. And the great thing with this is it's got a print on it because it looks like a little dot, but it's actually not, it's actually stars. Can imagine if you got your two meters of cream with that as well. That would be a really nice, where's my two meters of cream? Just look how well that would work together. Obviously the two meters of cream is not included in the price that's on the screen at the moment. This is a separate bundle we had on earlier. But you can just tell when you pop these different colorways together, how well they work. So this is our red one. Look at that. From afar, you'd just be thinking these are little spots, but wait for it. Poor Joe's running in and out to get this done. Look how lovely they are. Can you imagine your bunting out of this? Even if you just put a white bunting in the middle and you had these sort of an inch uh, star, an uh, inch star border around your bunting, how fun would that look? So what color have we called this one? Is it just red? This one's called Scarlet. We've got little stickers on our products, so we've got to just make sure we put the stickers back on. All of these are available individually as well. So if you're looking to get those, this one is now our Navy. Gorgeous Rose and Hubble fabric there. Again, you can see those little stars. They're just so fun. I wonder if they're meant to be little stars and moons. But you can imagine as bunting again, that would be beautiful. But even as kids' dresses and things and little things like that, I think that would be really pretty. Really lovely little. So if you are looking at buying this as a bundle, um, it will come pre-cut as the half meter because they're already cut at the moment. Um, but if you wanted to get them individually on the website as well, they are available. So I'm reading out the colors for you as well. You'll just need to do a bit of a search online for that. This one's our lavender colorway. And if you just search Ditsy Star, and then the, uh, they'll come up with all the different colors on it as well. This one's our lavender. And our website, we've had a wonderful little addition to our website recently where you can now shop by category, which is great. You've got all the different categories of the products that we sell from sewing machines, books and kits, plain fabric, pattern fabric, all the bundles and everything as well. It's a lovely little addition, which is great. 
because we're always looking to improve everything as we go. If you haven't shopped on our website before, uh, don't be alarmed if you type in sewingstreet.com and you, then you get uh, diverted to Jewelry Maker. Jewelry Maker is our sister channel and we're sharing their website while we're building our own at the moment. These things all take a little bit of time to do. So don't worry, oh, what's that little thread doing on there? Sorry about that. Let's try that again. So if you do go on and you see Jewelry Maker, don't be alarmed, you are in the right place. You are gonna find all the products there. And just keep scrolling down. And there's a search function as well that you can just type in what you're looking for. This is now called the Pistachio Colorway, which is just, again, got that gorgeous little star on it. Really fun. Doesn't it look like a little ice cream there, that pistachio ice cream? Lovely little colorway, that. We've had some lovely color names all the way through. We're just thinking, oh, these aren't quite as fun as the other colorways that we've had. Making sure I put the stickers back on. <laughs> Don't get it the wrong way around. So this one is called Pink. This is our pink colorway. The Rose and Hubble Ditsy Stars in Pink. You're getting a half meter of each of these five colors in our bundle that we've got at the moment. The bundle price then for these five is $18.99 and we've called it very cleverly the Ditsy Star Fabric Bundle. Giving you our five colorways on that as well. And my folding is not as quick as it could be, but it is certainly a lot neater than it was. And I'm remembering to put the labels back on. So we'll just show you again our lovely colorways there as our bundle. And you see, the thing is as well, when you look at that together, you wonder, why on earth would somebody have put a navy in that collection? But when you see them like this, you can see how wonderfully well the, na the, the navy just brings the whole collection to life. Because if we take that navy out, it doesn't work quite as well. You see what I mean? It just works such a... Somebody's done all the hard work for you by collecting this bundle and putting it together. It's just very cleverly done. Half meter of each of those five colors there. We've got the, what was it, red, navy, lavender, pistachio, and pink. So if you do want those by the half meter, check the website. You'll be able to find those there. And no. Oh my goodness. So I'm still not getting very well at good at the talk back. You can tell someone's talking to me as I go. The neutrals colorway, brand new to Sewing Street today. It's gone. It's gone. Well done to all of you. I'm going to take it off the shelf because it's gone like our school grey earlier. Sold out of two colourways. Nothing wrong with that. Thank you all for shopping with us today. It's really nice to have you with us. Um, and I'm so glad that's gone so well. So I'm assuming we can say that our neutrals is our favourite bundle at the moment. Ooh, blues core or blue teal? I'm hearing now that we've actually, it's been closely followed by our Blue Core collection. I'll just do a recap on those in case you haven't seen those for that. This is such a lovely colorway. We've got our, is that Peacock? We've got our Peacock colorway there. And then we've got our Powder Blue. We've got our Marine. We do see this Marine a lot. It's a really lovely colorway there. And this one's called Cadet. Should I open these up so you can see them? Because the colours, you sometimes see them a bit better when you've got them out. Oh, I've got my... You're gonna, I'm going to hold this this way so I don't have to do it there. I just saw the lovely silver label on it. And you can see that colourway really is lovely. So what we're doing with our little silver labels is we're trying to be greener by having less fabric, uh, less plastic in the universe. So we're using our little silver labels to get that right. So that was our cadet colorway. That was our cadet colors there. Oh, I'm hearing as well, you're buying these individually as well. Shall I open all of these? If it's doing... And the marine, because it's the marine's my favourite one. So have a look at that. Actually, I don't know whether the marine or the peacock anymore. This marine is just such a beautiful colour. So this is a half meter in this bundle now. We've got four core fabrics in that. There we go. That is our second most popular bundle of the day. Which is always nice to have. And it's blue, obviously. Blues are always very good. So there we go, we've got our Blue Cause collection there. Just a little bit of a recap on that. And now we've got our fabulous 
stars. Look at this. This is called the Tropical Spot Collection. It does actually feel really tropical, doesn't it? Really brighten up any project there, doesn't it? Lovely, lovely product there. So we are got, this is white dot on purple. Oh, oh, there's no silver dot on this one. Perfect. Look at that. This one is purple, is it? White on purple. This is the uh, Tropical Fabric Bundle Collection. You're getting a half meter of the purple there. $18.99. Hmm. Oh, and I've just heard now, each dot is three millimeters, if you want to know how big the dots are. Looking for a nice spot fabric. There you go, that's the purple. This one is the pink. The Cerise. Lovely, lovely colorway there. And the, is this navy or black? This is navy. So this is a white dot on navy. But you can see with the white dot, I actually thought that was black because it was, looked so, so, um, so much darker with that white dot on it, but really lovely together. And this is now the tropical bundle. And then we've got, is this yellow? Yellow. And that's a three millimeter dot on there as well. Is this called salmon? Oh, I like that. That's a nice salmon color there. But you can see together, don't they just look really, really good? Really lovely. And then we've got the last bundle of our hour here. Hmm? I can't believe we got through all this fabric. And I can't believe how much of it I want to take home with me. <laughs> So this is now our Pastel Spots fund, uh, Fabric Bundle Collection. You're getting a half metre of each one of those five fabrics there, which will be $18.99. So we're going to start with white on tan. Just a lovely tan, that one. And then this one's called Pale Blue. They're just such a delicate colourway, this. They're not very... When, you know what I mean when you get some very bright, bright fabrics? These are really lovely. They're totally different to our tropical collection. This one's, I, I want to say muted, but it may, that always implies that the fabrics aren't very good. But these are just such a gorgeous colorway. This is a really nice color, that one. And is this one plum? Look at that. And then we've got last but not least, the lovely lilac. And then as a bundle there, you're getting those half meters of each five of those fabrics coming in at $18.99, half meter of each one of those, getting two and a half meters of fabric in that one. And that's our Pastel Spots Fabric Bundle. Really lovely. I can't believe we got through all of that. That was lovely. So make sure you check our website to see what we've got available. Um, oh, our early bird. Unfortunately, it has sold out. So within the first hour, our early bird is gone. Congratulations to each of you who managed to get it. Really lovely product, great deal. And I'm loving this. I'm just accumulating this wonderful little collection of sold out products at the bottom there. And I'm not surprised. It's such great value. Really lovely quality products here. So I'm really, really excited. After the break, we have my absolute pride and joy. We've got our block of the week, lots of demos. Oh, I'm here with selling out, selling these already. So we've got the three colorways in the blocks of the week. So I'll be able to show you those in a few minutes. And we're just gonna change the setup. We'll be back with you now. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, 
drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved and it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel jewellery makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Good morning and welcome back to Sewing Street today. It is Friday, nine o'clock, block of the week. Woo! Any of you who don't know about the block of the week, let me show you what it is that we're doing today. 
we have made, because we're all at home and not able to do as much as we would like, we decided to do a block of the week because we're all at home and we've got time to do it now. And we thought a block of the month would be fantastic, but we've got the time now, let's do a block of the week. So I then designed this quilt um, and I'm going to try and flick this over without getting rid of everything on our set. Perfect. And this is what the quilt looks like. The colourway I'm showing you now is our Brights colourway. And you can see you've got 12 different blocks. Sorry, this isn't lining out. There we go. This is our Brights colourway. You've got 12 different blocks in the quilt. And then we're going to have a 13th week where we're going to do sashings and borders. So each week you're going to get to learn a new technique, or maybe not new, but you'll do a technique that will improve your quilting um, experience. You'll pick up your, you'll increase your quilting repertoire as it was. What have I done here? So we've got our gorgeous blues in the middle here today. And then we've got our gorgeous uh, vintage collection here. Look at that. All of them have got the same blocks, everything is identical, except for the gorgeous colours. So at the moment we are doing week four, and if you've missed any of the blocks, don't worry. Great thing is, is because we print the fabric ourselves, and this is exclusive to Sewing Street, all the fabric is available. Um, if we do ever sell out, because we have sold out once or twice already, just bear with us for a week or two, and then we're going to be reprinting and remaking everything. So we've got Haley checking our stock every single time we're on air. And if we're running a bit low, we're then able to just then print it out in the next couple of days after that. So if we do run out, just keep checking back on the website. You will always be able to get these blocks. At the moment, we're on block four. So blocks one, two, and three are still available on the website. So let me show you what block one was. And I'll just take this and show you on our blue colorway over here. Um, and I've got the quilt upside down. So this was, I hung this quilt upside down, I wasn't paying attention. But the good thing is, is it's a non-directional quilt. So this is block one that we had. So you can see that that goes in there. If I had an extra hand, that would be easier to show. So that was our block one, and now I've ruined this. <laughs> I'm doing really well today. Stay, thank you. Not gonna touch it again. So this was our blue colorway for week one. Um, this was our Brights colorway in week one. And our vintage colorway here. So if you wanted to order these and you've seen the colors that you like, you can just call the Bright, the call center 0800 001 4433 and just say to them, Brights block one! And they'll pop it in your basket for you. I hope you don't do that because then they're probably gonna get very cross with me, but there we go. And each one of these, you'll get a fabric panel and the instructions on how to make the quilt. And for each month, you'll be able to do that. And the good thing is, is that because we've got separated YouTube um, tutorials now, we've actually pulled the hour out um, and you've got that as a single individual watching uh, segment, just so you don't have to look through every Friday. So that will be a separate segment. You'll be able to find that at any point on our YouTube channel as well, which is great. So then we had week two, which was this way. And the week two came out and looked like that in the blue. It's a really lovely colorway. This. I love all three colorways. I think they're fab. So that was our blue. And then we had our brights. And then we've got our vintage. And our vintage colorway turns out beautifully as well. Now, the vintage has been our most popular colorway that we've done so far. Um, and we have sold hundreds of these products so far, which has been so, so heartwarming for me. Um, if you do want the vintage as well, unfortunately, some weeks are a little bit low on stock, but don't worry. If we have sold out of any one of them at any point, just wait a couple of days and they'll reappear on the website in a couple of days. Otherwise, just wait till the following Friday and we'd have filled up our stock that we may have run out of. And again, we've got our instructions there from week two. And then we'll go back onto week three and just show you what you've got to catch up on if you haven't taken places. You may have already made it. I've been looking online and seeing all the fabulous um, pictures that everybody has been doing. So if you have got them and you are making them, please share your pictures on our Facebook page. I'd love to see them. This was block three in our blues colorway. Really lovely colorway there. And then we've got our brights. Again, just a really lovely, fun colorway that. And then the most popular being our vintage colorway. 
Really, really great collection there. So those were the blocks that we made for weeks one, two, and three. All of them are still available, and we're in week four now. So let me show you what we're actually going to make today. Got our lovely blue. This is our block today. Oh, 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 half square triangles. You're going to be fine, I promise you. But the good thing is, is you're now going to learn the techniques. You're going to be able to find a way of learning new techniques on this with me, which are really comfortable. And I promise you, it is a lot easier than you think it is. And you've got a whole week to make the block. You can just sit and re-watch this. I'm going to show you every single step from the very beginning, cutting everything out to making this block. That's our bright colorway there. And then we've got our vintage colorway here as well. So that's what it's going to look like at the end once you've made it. Let me show you what it's going to look like when you get it. So let's say you're getting the vintage colorway. I'm going to move these out of the way. You're going to get the, the instructions. The instructions are nice and simple. You'll be able to then check the instructions on the other side for what size you're cutting everything out. That's going to be the instructions. And then you're going to get the colorway, the colorway that you order. So if, let's just say you've got the vintage one. You're going to get this panel and you're going to get the instructions. Okay, and then what does your panel look like? So for me, the most exciting thing about it is you get the salvage. I know this is really silly, but it's got my name on it. Very excited about the salvage with the name on it as well. So it actually says to you, this is the welcome quilt in vintage. John J. Cole Morgan's block of the week, block four of 12. So you've got that as your lovely salvage. And then look how big this panel is. So each week when you get these, you're going to get a different amount of fabric. And that's because of how much fabric you need for that week for your block. You are always going to have a lot of fabric left over because the very first time I made block one, I cut the wrong fabric, uh, the wrong, I cut the fabric incorrectly. So we then chatted and we said, right, we need to make sure we've got enough for people like me who make mistakes and cut them out incorrectly. And don't, I didn't read the instructions that I wrote. It's just ridiculous. So there we go, that's our vintage colorway panel that you're going to get. And then you've got our brights colorway panel that you're going to get. So this is what the brights one is going to look like. Now each and every single one of these, you will see where I'm pointing now, has got fabric one, and then the pink one in the middle is called fabric three, I think. Let me just double check. Yes, it is. And then the yellow fabric on this colorway is fabric two, and then the blue fabric there, you can see that little white circle there, that's called fabric four. Now this is really, really important that you understand this, and I'm gonna go through this again with you now. Uh, I'll do it when I go to the blue collection. What's really important is our instructions are written for the colorway of the pattern. So where we've called fabric one, fabric one on this pattern is the white, whereas fabric one in the brights is this color here, which is actually gray. Now, the reason that becomes confusing is on my pattern, fabric three is gray, but on here, fabric three is pink. So it takes a little bit of time to understand where we are on that. And I'm gonna talk you through that now for the blue collection. It just, just to make sure that you understand where we are on that, it was just easier to write this in one single monotone uh, sort of four colors here to and then tie it back into the fabric. So that's just something just to wrap your head around. You're not making it in the colors that are written. You're writing in the number. So then we're going to do the blue collection here. This is the blue panel. And this is exactly what I'm going to be making today. And then this is the blue colorway that you're getting here. So for each of these colorways, you're going to get that panel of fabric, which are exclusive to Sewing Street. You won't be able to get these anywhere else. And you're going to get the instructions. So each one of those, you'll get the, whatever colorway you choose and the instructions. I know someone who's doing three of these, who's doing them one in each colorway. And for each one of them, she ended up getting the blue one and the pattern, the bright one and the pattern, 
and the vintage one and the pattern. So she gets three patterns and three panels if she's ordered three of them. So that is where we are there. So when, what I'm loving at the moment is everybody who is taking part are uploading their pictures on Facebook, on the fans page and on the uh, Sewing Street TV page, which is fantastic. I love watching them and I do look at them. So please keep doing that. It's a great thing for this. Because we're all on a, most of us are isolated and not seeing other people at the moment, what we wanted to do is create something as a sense of community, something for you to take part. If you've got questions, pop them on the group. If I don't see the question and answer it, normally you've got five or six other people who've come along and been able to answer it because we've got some really talented people out there who are just wanting to give their help. And it's to create community and to increase that support group for people doing projects like this. So I've had a message in. Hello, Angela. Thank you for your message this morning. She's what? Oh, she's got hers and eagerly awaiting the demonstration this morning. Angela, thank you so much. This is a project that's given her something to look forward to. Although she's a key worker and still going to work. Well, thank you very much for being a key worker and keep supporting everybody. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'm pleased to give you something to look forward to. Oh, that's interesting. So Angela's saying that she's hoping that our weekly projects will carry on well after lockdown. Ooh, I'm up for that. Ooh, I like that idea. Thank you, Angela. That's a great suggestion. And what we love is your feedback that you give like that. We're able to then take to Haley and to the team and actually say, there's a need for it. Let's do it. So what the great thing is that when you've got ideas and suggestions, pop it on our social media. We're always reading and see what we can do and we can bring to you. We will. Right. Let's start the demo. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is um, the fabric one, two, and three. So let's start with the instructions on here. You will see in the top left-hand corner um, of each of your strips. So this is whether you're getting the blue or the vintage, or whether you're getting the brights. Sorry, I should have had this ready to go. Or whether you're getting the brights, every single one of them will say fabric one, fabric three, fabric two, and fabric four. So that was our brights colorway. That's fabric one, that's fabric three, that's fabric two, and that's fabric four. So that's our vintage colorway. That's fabric one, that's fabric three, that's fabric two, and that's fabric four. That's in our blue colorway. Why is that important, you ask? I'm gonna show you now. Because the instructions are written as fabric one. Fabric one is white. So in my pattern, that's fabric one, which is white. Then it tells you fabric two, is pink, so my fabric two is there, but fabric two is actually in the bottom corner there. So you know when you're cutting fabric two, you're cutting from this section here. Then we've got fabric three, which in this pattern is gray, so you can tell it goes in the corners over there for a half square triangle, but fabric three is this one here. And then on the brights and the blue, uh, uh, the brights and the vintage, it's the middle one. So you've just got to be very cautious. And then finally, block four, a uh, fabric four is black on my colorway, which is that big center square, while fabric four over here is this one here. So that's really, really important for you to uh, get that concept on that. It's a little bit frustrating for some. I apologize. We're in lockdown. We couldn't write instructions for all three of these to get the colorway because it just was too complicated and we didn't have the manpower to be able to do it. So we're hoping that this works for you. So now we'll be able to, and if you don't, drop us a message and we'll try and help you where we can. So the very first thing I do is I get my panel like this. This is how my panel arrives. And I get very excited because it's got my name on it. I love it. It's got my name on it. I know it's a really silly thing, but anybody who's a designer who's got their name on something, print it out and people are enjoying it. gives me a huge boost on that. It's definitely part of the plan in some way. So there we go. You're going to get your bundle like that. So what I do then is I cut off my salvage and hang it on the wall. And then I take my fabric and the very first thing that I do 
So I do this with scissors. Now, I didn't want to do this on the show for you because it's a little bit dull watching somebody cut things out with scissors. So what I do is I first of all take my fabric one, and even though I wrote it, I take fabric one, there's fabric one, and I love my charts. They work, they really work, and you pop that on there, okay? Then fabric two, And it's important to do this because most of us, now I'm hoping everybody is taking part in this as we go, but most of us do have UFOs that we started three, four, five years ago, and it's in a box, and you're thinking, what on earth was I thinking? What color did I use there? We all do it, and none of us take notes or anything, so that's why I know this is a bit of a silly thing, to people think it's silly, but if you put that on like that, it, takes th it doesn't even take 30 seconds, but you then know which fabric is which color. And as, as long as you keep your pattern with the piece of fabric, you then know that's fabric one, two, three, and four. So that's what we're looking to do, is just make your life a little bit easier. And I'm trying to put all my pins back in there without stabbing myself, and that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna throw them on the floor over here. There we go. <laughs> Got my eye in there, so there we go. Right, so the first thing you're going to do is once you've cut those labels off, you're going to separate these out. So you've got fabric three, that's my fabric three, that's my fabric one, that's my fabric two, and that's my fabric four. And we're then going to cut these out to the sizes that we need. I'm using this wonderful um, eight and a half inch square by Fiskars. Not by Fiskars, that's by creative grids. I love these creative grid rooters. Sorry, what's that? Oh my goodness, I'm hearing the six and a half has sold out. Six and a half inch square has sold out. So we've got the eight and a half inch square for you as well. Really great little rulers this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to square up our edges. And check you've got the ruler the right way around. Excuse me, leaning in there. So I'm squaring up my edges here just to make sure I've got a nice little clean edge to start with. And I'm cutting my very first square over here. And then the sizes that you're cutting everything are in your pattern. So you'll be able to see all of those. And the great thing is, if you've never done half square triangles before, you're going to be able to watch me do this. And it is. And the good thing is, is you've got excess fabric, so if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. I love the way I'm flipping my fabric, but I've got a rotating mat, and I don't need to flip my fabric. I'm so used to working on the big mat in the studio. And I specifically asked for the rotating mat to make my life easier today, and then I forget I've got it. Right, so that's the... There, so I'm cutting two of these squares. And the good thing is that I wanted to make sure, even from the cutting process, everything's available in one tutorial for you, even if I am a little bit off your screen. <laughs> But please, I really want you to keep posting all your pictures on this. So we've got all of our team involved on this. Haley and Haley B and Haley M and um, Hannah are all taking part in this block of the week, which is fabulous. And it's nice to see their little pictures of their posts as well. I'm trying to get Kat involved, but I'm not quite sure whether we'll get that right. Oh, she's doing EPP, you see. So now she's telling me she's too busy to do that. Yeah, right. Team effort here. So, oh, we've got a new sewing machine coming, Kat. Oh, that's good. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do with this is cut per the instructions. I'm taking my, my square here, and I'm cutting across the long diagonal, and I have to cut four um, half square triangles here. Oh, my goodness, I'm hearing over 50 of the vintage colorway have already sold this morning really popular. I'm so glad you're all getting involved in this and enjoying it as much as I am. And I'm also I'm pleased that the half square triangles aren't putting you off. 
because this is meant to be a skill builder as well, which is great. So first thing I'm doing is once I've cut these, I'm going to put them all my number one fabrics. I'm putting all my cuts in one place. So that is the first thing I'm doing there. Then I'm cutting four rectangles. Where is my white fabric? Now, many of you don't like cutting different layers. I like to do things a bit quicker. So I'm going to cut layers here because I feel more confident doing layers. If you don't, you just keep cutting the way you were normally cutting. There's no pressure. You do what's comfortable for you. And the good thing is, I have a rotating mat, so I just do that. How much am I cutting these for? I'm cutting four rectangles. There we go. Helps if I read the instructions, even though I wrote them. There we go. Forgive it if my head is leaning into your shot there. Apologies. We want to make sure it's accurate. So everybody asks me how much do you have left over? That's how much you've got left over of the white. So you've got more than enough left over if you make a mistake. Ask me how I know. So I'm just lining this all up to make sure I've got it the right way. Yesterday I was cutting something and I couldn't figure out what I'd done and I turned the ruler the wrong way around. So I had an extra one and a half inch, uh, an extra half inch on my cut and I couldn't figure out what was going on there. We all do it. I'm just doing it right in front of you, in your te on your telly in front of you. Right. So that is, oh. So double, oh, what am I doing? I'm going to switch rotary cutters. Sorry, that one's got something wrong with the blade. Right, so we'll check that's the right size. Yes, it is. Right, so need four of those. So that's all of fabric one cut. Uh, now I'm cutting fabric two, so I know per my chart that is fabric two. So I'm taking fabric two and I'm cutting accordingly there. So I learned a top tip recently. If you're cutting two pieces at a certain size, cut it bigger and then you cut the bigger piece first. That's better. And then you cut it down, which I hadn't thought of before, but it is quite a clever idea. I love giving you all different tips and tricks and things. Don't know if you like them or not, but I'd rather you have them and not. So this is how much of fabric two you're going to have left over. And then I'm just rotating this round to cut that to the correct size. Now I'm cutting four at once. You don't have to cut four at once. You cut as much as you like or as little as you like. You've got a week to do it. You don't have to do it all in one hour on live telly. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I've just had a thing say, gosh, are we meant to be live? Isn't that fun? Oh, it's like a big surprise. There we go. And then we just trim the last edge in here. And again, cut one piece at a time if you need to. Can't believe how quickly the last four weeks have gone. Isn't it strange? So that's fabric one, that's fabric two. Now we're going to cut fabric three. Fabric three is what was grey on the pattern, but in my blue, this is my fabric three. So I know it says grey in the pattern, but this is what we're cutting to. So first thing we're going to do is, hopefully I'm cutting two squares. You're going to have so much of this one left over this week, it's great. Now you see what we're going to do, what I'm doing now is I've got, we're chatting about week 13, about the binding and backing and sashing and all of that. Um, so the good thing is, is I wanted to make sure that you had lots of fabric left over because then you can make additional bits and bobs. You can make more blocks or you can um, 
uh, you can do a ba- you see I love double sided quilts so um, we're chatting about how we're doing backings and things like that but what might be nice is if you've got a little bit left over from two or three weeks you might very well want to then remake some of your favorite blocks and you can use those for the back because we just wanted to make sure you had a lot of the fabric left over so that you could then do your own projects or um, just if you have made a little error because we all do it um, Perfect, so I've now squared that up nicely. And this is how much I've got left of fabric number three. Huge, huge. And then you're gonna cut those into the four triangles that you need. Oh, I've had a message in from Jeanette. Good morning, Jeanette. Oh, she's done block, she's done the blue colorway and she's saying block one and two is done. Totally loved making it. Oh, we loved having you involved. Really, sorry, what about the instructions? Really easy instructions and so much fabric left over. Oh, j so impressed with the quality of the fabric that she's gone and ordered the vintage colorway as well. Jeanette, thank you so much. We love hearing messages like that because that's honest feedback and we really value it. Thank you so much. That's lovely to hear. And good luck with the rest of your blocks. Today's nice and easy. You'll be fine. So now we're cutting block four, which is one big square. Um, and dum, dum, dum. I'm going to cut that a little bit bigger and trim it down. And then this rotating cutting mat is actually really handy for this project because like where I am now, I know that I've trimmed that side and I've trimmed this side. So I just leave my ruler in place, rotate it round and then just pick this up, rotate my ruler, work out exactly how big it needs to be for the finished size that I need it to be. Let me double check I'm getting that to the right size. Yes, I am. And then you can then just rotate it that way. Don't need to move anything. Now the ruler's all still in place, nothing's moved. I feel confident to hold that there. And there we go. That's it, that's all you're cutting. And that's how much you've got left of fabric number four. So you can see a really nice big chunk of fabric left over. So now I've finished my cutting for the moment. I am now going to do what I do every time I make any block. I've cut everything out. I now go and make sure that I'm lining this up correctly. So my fabric two, that's my fabric two. That's fabric two. Now, when you cut this, you will see that I have got a tiny little hair of fabric number four on the edge of this fabric number two. It is so tiny, you will not see it. And the good thing is, is it doesn't matter if you've cut a little bit in or you've got a little bit of white. You can see what I mean. It's tiny, 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 tiny. As long as it's less than a quarter of an inch, you will be absolutely fine. And the reason I've asked them to show you that is when you cut your fabric, there may be a little bit of white, there may be a bit of the fabric from the other, um, when you're cutting, none of us ever cuts completely squarely. When you do have little bits left over, please don't worry. You're gonna be absolutely fine. As long as that is less than a quarter of an inch, it'll be hidden in your seam allowance. So there we go, we've done that bit. And now we just gotta do my half square triangles. So on my pattern, Gray is fabric three, so I know that in my blue colorway, that's fabric number three, fabric number three, fabric number three, and fabric number three. And then I've got my fabric number one in the outer corners. So there we go. Now, what are you worried about? So, the very first thing we're going to do, and the reason I'm doing this out of order in the pattern, is I'm going to sew these two together. So I'm skipping number one. Um, oh no, I'm not. I'm going to do it right here. So first thing I'm going to do is pour all my scrap piece of thing on the floor. That was not planned, but it's been done. The first thing you're going to do is you've got to test your seam allowance. This is very, very important when you're doing half square triangles. It is so important that I'm going to get you to do it twice. You want to do it three times, do it three times. But the important thing to know is, I'm going to do this on two different edges. And of course, this is on white fabric, so that's not going to work. I'm going to use my fabric number three, that fabric number four. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up where I think my quarter inch is. Okay. And I have purposely wobbled in the middle. So that's this one here that I've stitched. That is where I, th and I'm going to put a pin in it as well. Where have I hidden my pins? I was trying to throw them on the floor earlier. What did I do with them? Right, so this is the first, so the, the black headed pin is the first one that I did. Okay, so that is where I've lined it up as I normally would with my quarter inch seam. I'm just going to square this up and you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to drag that towards me because that's not safe to cut like that. So I'm squaring this up now. Okay, and now I am taking this bit, which is my next section, uh, the, the next test, I'm taking this probably what I call two cotton lengths in from where I would normally sew my quarter inch. Okay, We're gonna, I'm showing you what's normally known as a scant quarter inch. And I'll show you why that's really important now. So as we've been doing this through this whole process, quarter inch seam is what you're working towards. It's ideal. Most people don't have a perfect quarter, quarter inch. It's not a problem. And if you don't get to the quarter inch, it's not a problem. No one's going to complain. No one's ever given a quilt back because one of the seams was out. So first thing I'm going to do, this is where I lined my um, point up. And I'm getting my fabulous little pointy stiletto that I usually use. So you can see this is where I thought my quarter inch is normally. And I am literally a hair over. So you can see if we do that, you can see that my quarter inch, it's, it's on the line. So you can see there's my seam there. But you can see that this is literally on the line. Okay. Now, if I did, if I did a triangle at this point, I've got my seam exactly on the quarter inch, so you can see that that measured exactly a quarter of an inch. Now when you fold the fabric over, like that, on the seam, you've always got one or two threads over here which create the fold. So when you're folding that across, so you can see that, you might not be able to see, but the fold is going to there. So you've now got what was a quarter of an inch seam is now almost three eighths. So what's important to recognize is when you're actually folding the fabric, you're always going to have two or three threads between the seam and the end where you're actually folding it. So those two or three threads there, when you're doing a half square triangle, if you do your normal quarter inch, it's absolutely fine, but your seam is slightly bigger. Why is that a problem? So your triangle is going to be slightly smaller because your seam is slightly bigger. So if you then do your quarter inch seam two threads further in, so when you actually look at it, you can see your quarter inch is not that much smaller. I'm going to take the green cutting mat away because you'll see that a little bit easier. If I like, oh, then you can't see that. Uh, so if I line my quarter inch up there, you can see that my white line is not on there. And it's, it's just two threads of cotton away. So when I fold this over to where my seam would be, so you can see my little fold over there. It's going to the edge of those dots. If I then put my rotary, my your seam is perfect. So you can see that the fold is two or three cotton threads away from the seam. So if you've done half square triangles before and they've come out being slightly off, that's why. It's because you've used the perfect quarter inch that you use, usually use. But if you turn, oh, I flicked it away there, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I tried. But if you actually do it two cotton lengths this way, you're actually going to get the perfect half square triangle because you've then taken into account the, the square, the folding of the fabric in when you're actually sewing it. So the, 
that is where the few issues come through with half square triangles. So, having said that, what could possibly go wrong? I'm now going to do my sewing my half square triangles. Now, everybody remember, and I'm not going to pull this, this is a full bias edge. This is a full bias edge. Please, I beg you, do not stretch your fabric. Do not pull it, do not tug it, do not do anything other than just gently lay it up to the next one and put it in your machine and let your machine do the work. You're just literally putting your hands over it to guide it through. You're not doing anything more. You're just guiding the fabric through. You're not holding it or pressing it. You just let it gently go through the machine. You've got to make four of these half square triangles. So you're doing exactly the same thing. Line them all up. Oh. I'm hearing that we're selling really, really well on these today. Well, I'm so pleased you're enjoying them all. Thank you. Congratulations for getting involved and please keep posting your messages on our social media platform. If you haven't got our social media already, I'll tell you what they are. We've got our Facebook page, which is run by the channel, which is Sewing Street TV. So if you type in www.facebook.com forward slash Sewing Street TV, that will take you automatically to our page. You can send us messages in the studio on that. And that's the best way of getting in touch with us. So if you've got any blocks that you've done and got any questions that you want to ask me now, I'm here. You've got my undivided attention. So you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, pop your um, pictures of your progress on our Facebook page as well, which is the Sewing Street Fans page. That would be lovely to hear from you. And um, we do monitor them and it's lovely to hear back what your feedback is. So now I've, I've sewed together my four half square triangles. Now, most people have asked, how do you press your seams? Do you press them open? Do you press them closed? There is no right or wrong. What works for you? In this, I've always, I like to do, when you're doing new projects like this, I just think it's a small project. Try something different. If you normally press your seams open, try pressing it to one side. If you normally press them to one side, try pressing them open. Just try something different on it. The pressing on this is quite important because you're on the bias. So just literally, I press my seams open, but what I do is I finger press them down first, but I'm not moving the fabric, I'm not stretching the fabric, I'm just gently going along and pressing it open. I then take my iron and I press. I am not moving my iron, I'm just holding it down. Okay, that's it. I have done nothing more. If you want to, go back again like that, but do not Go like that with your iron, put your finger on here and push it away because you're going to distort it out of all proportion and it's just not going to work as well. If you wanted to use Best Press as well, that's a really good way of doing it. We've got a fabulous product, Best Press, which I'm sure most of you have used before. Um, available on the website. I think we might be out of stock of it at the moment. We were the other day, but just keep checking back. But we've got the lavender and vanilla one, which is absolutely divine. So you can see I am just pressing my fabric. I am not ironing it. I don't know how to iron. And if Andrew is watching, hello darling, I still don't know how to iron. It's pressing. It's pressing. So if any of you at home normally press your fabric and your partner tells you, but you know how to iron. If you've lived with that, if you let them believe that illusion, you don't know how to iron things. You just say, I'm not ironing, I'm pressing, darling. Pressing. They're two very different things because you can see I'm not moving the iron at all. I wouldn't, and I've, I've just heard in my ear, uh, you could do that, you couldn't do that with a pair of shirts or trousers. I'm like, I couldn't possibly answer that. I don't iron. You just keep going with it. Eventually they believe you. We've had a message in from Ruth. Good morning, Ruth. How are you today? She's, oh, she's saying excellent demonstra uh, explanation of a quarter inch seam. Thank you so much. I think it's, I like, because I didn't know what it was and what the difference was. I think I like to explain it the way uh, people may have explained it to me or the way I think works best to explain it to others. That's why I'm here. So, if you have done this correctly... You should have a five and a half inch half square triangle. 
I have a five and a half inch triangle. I'm very excited. So that's what you're looking to. And I want the dance. I want videos of dancers as well. Okay. So there we go. We pop those on there. Perfect. So we then, as I, I always do this because I think it's really important that when you get your block laid out, you sew a bit, keep it there and keep it in the direction. Because all of us have sewn things the wrong way around. I still do it, but at least this way makes it a little bit easier. So next we're going to sew these two together. And again, we've got four of these. Bias is not as much of a problem on this. And this one you are doing again. If you want to do the scant quarter inch, that's absolutely fine because you do have a fold on it. Um, so I try to do a little bit, because um, a triangle seems to take a little bit more fabric. So if I'd use two threads for my um, half square triangle, I'll use one thread for this, because I think the triangle takes that little bit extra fabric. But you don't have to at all. If, you're try if your block has come out a different size, please don't worry. I have a technique at the end that is going to help you sort all of that out. Because in week 13, we're going to troubleshoot all those blocks that potentially are slightly larger or slightly smaller. There are ways of fixing it all. Don't worry about anything. So now I'm doing the blue colorway. I'm sure you can see the lovely um, brights colorway behind me on the wall. No, sorry, brights is on that one there. That one. That one. And the blue one on the wall behind me as well. I still don't have a favorite on this. I know that you as consumers have thought the vintage is the best one, which is fabulous. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, but I'd, I'm not sure. I'd love the brights. They're so good. Right, so we're almost there. And I'll tell you why, because now, if these measure correctly, we've, we're almost there because we've done a nine patch and that's what we're looking for. So now again, I'm pressing my seams open. If you haven't pressed your seams open before, try it, give it a go. Even though there's not a bias on this, I'm still doing it exactly the same way as I did my triangles. I gently press those open as I go. You can see I'm just swooshing it down with my fingers and then I'm pressing, not ironing. Nice try, Andrew. Nice try. And then I line that back up. Oh, this is looking good. And the great thing with this is even if you have been quilting for a while, this is a nice quilt to do because it not only does it take you back to basics, but it'll also boost your confidence because you're actually be able to go through the project and say, oh, I know how to do that. Oh, that's not so hard. I can do that. And every Friday, 9 a.m., here I am watching us doing this block each time. Hopefully each block will get in the hour. I'm a little worried that blocks 10, 11 and 12 might not be able to be done in the hour, but or you have permission to run over if needs be. Because I want to be able to cut everything out and do it all in that time. So that, that way you've always got your sort of a semi handhold as you're cutting all your way through. Oh, that is spot on. Liking that. Now, if you are a precision sewer and you want to make sure that everything is the correct size, all of your blocks, everything now should be measuring five and a half inch squares. If they don't, you can trim it down. Have a, I think it's always important to check why it doesn't measure that size. So if, for example, let's say this was the wrong size, I would turn this over and I would measure my seams, I'd remeasure my blocks, I'd remeasure everything to check where there was a slight difference. Because that's the only way that you kind of learn on how you can then improve going forward. Just see where the differences are and go from there. Now, in my pattern, you will see that I have said that you're going to sew these two together first. And you're going to make two of these. Oh, and before I do that, I'm going to slide these into view for you so you can see what I mean by a nine patch. Sorry, I jumped ahead then because I do these all the time, so I know. So some of you may have heard the term nine patch before. There are one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine. It's a nine patch. So you sew these three together, these three together, and those three together. And then you sew these together, all three of them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew these together first. And as you can tell, 
it's exactly the same, just the other way around. So I'm going to sew those two together first, and then I'm sewing these two. Now, I like an easy project first, so actually, having seen that, I'm going to sew these together first. It's the next step in the pattern, I'm just jumping ahead. And again, if you want to measure, you've just got to check that everything is the same size. You can see that that's exactly five and a half inches there. So that is exactly what you're looking for. And dark colour to dark colour. Ask me how I know. This little 550 experience machine is very cute. It works very, very well. You can go through and see all of our fabulous sewing machine tutorials as well. These, the Debbie and Jane and Vicky have done these fabulous tutorials on the machine, so make sure you check those out. Why? Why? We were having such fun, my darling. I was telling everybody how lovely you were, because you are. She's having a moment. She gets embarrassed when I tell everybody how lovely she is. And if you haven't gotten any of the previous blocks before, don't worry, we will always have the quantity available. So don't worry about missing out on a block because they will always be here. And if we run out, we will eventually print some more. It might take a day or two or a couple of days simply because of where we are. But don't worry, we will get them back in stock. We're just on a limited staff at the moment, so we just want to make sure that everything is being done safely and we're getting everything to you. It just may take a little bit longer than usual. There we go. So again, I'm just using a quarter inch with just one cotton thread away from the edge. And then again, I'm going to press that nice and flat. I'm just going to leave this up. And the great thing with these little um, June Taylor mats is you can just leave them up or you can move them and put them on top of your work as you go. So you can see what I did then is I took the nose of my little iron here and I just fed that across the top of the seam. I'm not pressing down at all and then I'm just pressing down completely. I'm doing mine all open because I have a friend who drummed it into my head a few years ago and now I can't not. Every time I do a seam that isn't pressed to the middle, uh, pressed open, I hear her screaming in my head. She'd be one of those terrifying nun types who had a little stick You'd beat your hands if you did it wrong. And I named a quilt after her as well. She's a lovely lady, one of my best friends. I love it a bit. So now I've just jumped back a step and all I'm doing is I'm sewing a quarter of an inch along the side of my half square triangle and my two rectangular pieces there. So we're almost, I think, how much time have we got left? I've got 15 minutes, we'll definitely finish this block in the hour. And you see, that's what I love as well. It's such a fun project, but it's also nice and quick that you can do it. And even if you just take your time and you just wanted to take a little bit longer on it, it's still possible to do it in an hour. So all I've done is I've sewn these two together, now I'm going to sew these triangles onto there again. And I love laying the block out first to make sure I'm sewing everything to the right way. So you may prefer to do that as well. And again, here where I'm just using one thread away from the edge, just to make sure when I fold everything back, um, it should then measure the exact inches that you need to be. That's my top tip of the day. So now we've got three, so what we had nine blocks before, we've now got three, and you're only two seams away and the block's done. Really, really simple project, but also it's one of those ones that you can actually take great pride in because you've mastered that quarter inch seam, you've mastered that uh, scant quarter inch seam, and it just works that little bit extra of a detail, just makes things a little bit more simple. And if you don't get it right, please don't get upset with yourself. This is meant to be fun. You're enjoying yourself. 
No one is going to be upset if you get your seam wrong. And if you're giving it as a gift, no one has ever given a quilt as a gift. And someone's turned around and said, oh, that seam doesn't match. Oh, that point doesn't match. I'm not having that. They look at it with the love and care that you put into it. And they love you and the quilt as much as you love them. And I've, I'm having to rush through this because obviously live telly, what could possibly go wrong? Making sure that you get everything done at the right time. You take your time. You want to do this over an evening. That works fine. The great thing with our YouTube channel as well, the tutorials are there. They're separate videos for you within a couple of days after the show's aired. And then you can just take your time through it and giggle when I get it wrong. So now, oh, 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 I'm quite liking that. Because now, oh, come on. I thought I'd try. So there we go. We're now at a three patch. There's one two and three. So the important bits here is you're wanting to line this seam up here with this seam here. That's the important bit there, this seam to there and this seam to there. That's where you're looking to aim. So if you are a pinner, I am not, but I will today if I can find my pins. Oh, there we are. I hid them over here because they'd come out the box. I'm going to use these. So what you're doing is I press my seams open so it's very easy for you to see where your line is. So I like folding my fabrics back so you can see that that line goes there. You pop those together and you squeeze one side or the other, it doesn't matter, and you pop your pin in there. And that way you can tell that your seam is perfectly placed to be immaculate. So I'm going to pin one and I'm going to do one by eye. I did this last week and the one by pinning didn't work and the one by eye did. So hopefully both are going to work this week. So again, you're just popping that straight in. If you want to use a little hair short of the quarter inch, that's absolutely fine. That is what you're aiming for. But a quarter inch seam down the side. So as I get closer to this, you'll see Lovely 550 has the option of keeping the needle down. You can see that this pin is here, is getting close to being underneath the foot. We well, know you want the pin under the foot, but nowhere near the needle. So you can see I've now pulled the first pin out and I go forward one more stitch and then I pull the second pin out. And the reason you do that is that the foot is now holding your seam together so you'll be able to now hopefully have that perfect seam um, all the way along. And then the second one I'm going to do by eye. And if you've never tried it by eye, try one. Might work, might not. And if it doesn't, no one's going to be upset. If you want to fix it, you just unpick that little section. Problem solved. And that worked perfectly. Both of them are perfect. That's what you're aiming for. You can see there that the seam, they work perfectly there. So that's the perfect seam that you're aiming for so that this blue just touches that blue there but doesn't exactly touch if that makes sense. And now the last seam, you're going to do exactly the same up here. Um, again, if you want to pin it, you saw how I was pinning it before. I'll show you one more time. You fold that back and check. You can see there my seam is now a little bit off. So what you're wanting to do is to make sure that the seam is exactly in line like that. Peel that back, hold that nice and firm with your finger there. And you push that pin down there and you peel that back. And then again, I'm not going to do the other side because I'm confident on it, but that is how you do it. You would put one in that side and one in that side. And then I eyeballed this one again, so I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So this is the last seam on block four. I want to do a little, I kind of feel like, you know those little Lone Ranger theme tunes? We need one of the... Da -da 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 Sorry, I promise I won't sing in your ear ever again. I promise. There we go. Wow. 
I'm so pleased to hear that people are still loving this. We're selling out, not selling out, but we're selling quite a few of these. I'm really, really pleased. And I'm going to run through each block each week, uh, each week that we've had, and you'll be able to see where we are. So if you haven't done the blocks before, you'll be able to then catch everything up. Welcome. Hope you're enjoying the show. I've lost my slipper because I can't sew with anything on my feet, so I have to put my slipper back on. So I'm popping that back here. And now in that, what time is it now? So in about 45 minutes, we have managed to do the whole block. And I'm not going to turn that round until I have pressed this. Or as people, some people would say, I have pressed it into submission. Right, so again, you can see I'm just gently finger pressing this seam open because I love an open seam. And I haven't put my, my um, iron down yet. I'm just pressing that seam open. And I've now put the iron down flat and I'm not moving the iron. I'm just pressing it along and then just gently moving it along and pressing down again. And you can tell there that is the perfect seam that you're looking for. Because when you fold it back, those lines should match up exactly. Oh, I missed that one. And I nailed that one. But we all do it. Every single one of us who's ever sewn a seam gone, nope, didn't make that. Now, if you do miss one, I'm going to show you what the top way of fixing it is without doing, undoing your whole seam. But if you, I'd, I wouldn't unpick it myself. But if you want to, I'll show you a quick way of doing that. So there we go, that's our block, nice and flat. Block four in blue, just undoing the iron. So I'll just quickly run through this one here. And you'll see that I literally, and it is two threads away. Now, I, the only reason I'm showing is because I know every one of you is gonna do this and think, oh goodness, what have I done wrong? But if we then just slide this down, that one's perfect. So what I would suggest to you, if you do want to unpick it, don't unpick the whole seam because that's perfect. That one up there is perfect. You don't need to redo this one because it's perfect. So what I would do is maybe a third of the way down. So maybe from there, I would unpick from there down to the end of the block. And then I would just gently tug this bit here because it's two threads of fabric. You're not gonna create any problems with bias. If you wanted to just unpick from about there, Pull that down and that'll match up perfectly. But you do not need to. The block, look how, well, I can't even tell on this side, you know, and that's, if you're wanting to be perfect, you can, t can you tell? Can you see my seam was gone? So I always think if you, can, if you can't see it when you're running past it in the field, leave it alone. Nothing wrong with it. But if you do want to, don't undo the whole seam. This is where I'm um, two threads out. If you want to, just unpick from there down to there and then just start re-sewing from there. But you don't need to, you can tell, you can't even see it. And I know I'm the, every single person who's ever sewed a quilt block are the biggest critics on it, but you can't tell from there. If you want to come and get that close to it, well, that's your choice. But I think the block is lovely as it is. So now that is block four in blue. Let me show you block four in the vintage and in the brights. So this is the vintage colorway. This is the most popular. This is the one that most people are getting. I'm just gonna move these out of the way here. Really gorgeous colors. I can see why it's so popular. The design team wanted to make sure that we had that lovely gray and the pink in there. And you can see it's, and they're not, the, the great thing is as well, they're not just solids you can actually see each and every one of them has a design on the background on here. I love this gray. I think this gray is the most beautiful background on it. You can see there, look at those little triangles all the way along in that shape of the diamond. It just works so beautifully. And then the green, you've got that lovely cross and then you've got the sporadic dot on the pink and then this lovely dashed on the gray. So the colors you're seeing on screen may be slightly different now with the overhead than you're seeing on in front of you. 
The color you've got on your screen now is the exact color that you're going to get. We've just got a slight variation of color on our overhead. It just is what it is. I've had a message in from Sandel. Hello. Just seen my program for the first time. Welcome. Oh, she's ordered all four blocks. Looking forward to doing it. Oh, that's lovely. What colorway did she choose? Did she say? Well, thank you very much. It's lovely to have you. Sorry. So oh, that was the other thing is uh, you've got the YouTube channel as well. So I've done a detailed description of how to make each block each week. It's every Friday at 9 a.m. So if you look on our YouTube channel, which is Sewing Street, it's normally on a Sunday or a Monday that they then get separated out into separate blocks. So if you go back and watch the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see block of the week, block one, two, three, and then in a few days time will be block four as well. Otherwise, the, the Friday block is up. Um, it's on every Friday at 9 a.m. So you'll always be able to find the groups. So there we go. This is now our colorway for the brights. And again, we've also not got a solid background as well. Again, you can see that they just got such detailing on the fabric as well. And then again, you can just see the detailing on these is so lovely. So that's the, the, that lovely triangle on the blue, and you've got the sporadic dot there. And this cross is really pretty as well. And then on the gray, you've got that, it's not gray, I don't know whether that's gray, it's oatmeal, but you've got this lovely fleck of white through it that works so, so, so well. <coughs> so, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, sorry. I'm plagued, plagued with frogs today. Sorry about that. So that's our bright colorway. And then we've got our lovely blue colorway that we've just done it in. Oh, getting in the wrong place again. There we go. And then you can just see the detailing on the fabric as well. We've got this gorgeous triangle for the blue again with these lovely triangles and then the dot for this one and that lovely cross there. And again, this lovely gray fleck in there as well. It's just, you can see all four colors there. They work so well together. And look, my seam's gone. <laughs> Every one of us would point that out, even though no one else had noticed. So that's our blue colorway. That's all of block four. So as you remember, for each week you're going to get, so this is now block four. Um, you're not going to get my, my fabric. Oh, hang on. That's the one I meant to be showing you. Sorry. There's a working one and a show one. So you're going to get a set of instructions and you're going to get this lovely panel. And I'll show you once again what the panel looks like just on the blue one because the colors for the brights and the vintage are the same. So you get the instructions there as well as this fabulous panel. So this is the blue colorway and then the brights and the vintage will be exactly the same. Um, each week the fabric pattern and the, uh, the panel may be slightly bigger or smaller in certain colorways. That's just because you need more of that color that week. So don't worry. Either way, whatever colorway you get, you will always end up with loads of fabric left over at the end. We're not just going to give you the exact size that you need in case, you, in case you make a mistake. So this is week four. You're going to get your fabric bundle as well as your pattern. That'll be $11.99. So that was the blue colorway there. Um, and if you've missed any of our colorways so far, don't worry, or any of our bl uh, blocks so far, don't worry at all. I'm just moving this all out of the way because I feel a bit cluttered here. If you've missed anything out before, don't worry about it. We've got block one for you here. So you'll get the lovely set of instructions and you'll get the fabric panel as well. Um, and each panel varies each week, but this is gonna be your block one. This is your vintage colorway in the block one. That's your vintage colorway. And again, these are exclusive to us, so we will always get them back in stock for you. If they do sell out for any reason, don't worry, we will be able to get them back in stock. It just may take a little bit of time, maybe about a week maximum, to get them back in stock for you. This was our Brights colorway for week one. And then lastly, for week one, we had our blue colorway. 
So in week 13, so we've got 12 different blocks each week. Week 13, I'm going to give you a suggestion of how I've laid the quilt out. You can do it however you like. You don't have to do it the way I've done it. You can make more of block two if you like, or more of block three. If you want to make four of block four and then just do it your way, you're entirely able to do that. That's not a problem at all because your blocks will all end the same size. For week two, you'll get a fabric panel, which will make this block here. And then these are the colorways for that. You've got that in the lovely vintage colorway, which is our most popular. And then we've got our brights colorway as well, also really lovely. And then we've got the blue colorway on that. And again, you get loads of fabric on the panel that you won't, you'll always have lots of fabric left over. Um, and really, cr very, very clear instructions written by moi um, but the great the only thing that i've had a pro not a problem but people have asked about is how are we coloring it because of the fabric colorway so if you've missed that at the beginning of the hour it'll be available on a youtube channel later um today so you'll be able to re-watch that again so this is now block three so if you're looking if you've missed the tutorial for block three just pop onto the sewing street uh, youtube channel and you'll be able to see how we've done it this was our vintage for block three that was our vintage one there. And then we've got our brights one here. And please, once you've made your block, please pop it on social media, either on Instagram or our Facebook page on uh, Sewing Street TV or the fans page. This is the blue combination for our week three. So those are the three blocks that we've done previously. And I'll just show you again what our four, three blocks look like for week four. Where have I put my pattern? That's our pattern there. And this is what you're gonna get again. You're gonna get your fabric panel that I've shown you already, block four. And then these are the three color colorways for the block four again. This is our blue. And if you want to see how that pops into the quilt, because I put my quilt in upside down, of course I have, that pops in over there. And hopefully that's not going to fall off. Woohoo! That was our blue colorway there. And then we've got our brights colorway. Yours won't come with a thread in the middle of it. And we've got our vintage colorway here. Vintage has been our most popular colorway again. And let me show you again what we are actually going to be making. This is what the quilt will look like when you finished it. And I've got it upside down, two seconds. Having thrown that on the floor, I will just use the vintage one. I'm very good at throwing things around the set this week. <laughs> I dropped a pin yesterday, doing well then. So this is the vintage colorway, which is our most popular colorway. And you can see we've already, you can see just the block four here that we've made today. This is what the quilt's going to look like at the end. You've got 12 different blocks. And even though I have hung one or two of them upside down, it doesn't matter because the quilt is completely non-directional. So if I hold the quilt like that, it still works and still looks lovely. And even that way as well. Oh, so there we go. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I've really enjoyed showing you that. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to take a little break now while we redo the set and we'll see you back in a few moments. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you.
And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Welcome back. And Vicky, thank you very much for telling us about my Make of the Week. We have our winners. We've got our three winners from our Make of the Week social media choices. The winners are, forgive me if I say your name wrong, Lynn Sharpel, Margaret Bere, or here, Beer, sorry, I apologize, Karen Jackson. These are your image, these are the pictures that have won the Make of the Week. Look at that, that is gorgeous. Well done, Lynn. And then we've got Margaret, well done. And then finally, we've got Karen Jackson with the Bargello. Look at that, isn't that just the most gorgeous Bargello? Very, very nice. All of you have won free postage and packaging on your next order through Sewing Street. So do drop us a message on our Sewing Street TV fan, Sewing Street TV page, and we'll be able to get you your code for your free shipping and uh, packaging and shipping. So thank you so much for doing that. Each week, do we do reset everything. I think it's on a Thursday. So Friday to Thursday, we're always checking our social media to check all of your makes of the week. And then we're able to announce them every Friday. So well done, all of you. Keep up the great work. And I have to say, it's a really tough job to judge because your work is incredible. Well done. So now we have got Creative Grids. Many of you have seen me demo Creative Grids before, and I absolutely adore them. Absolutely love you. Now with these, all of these creative grids, I will say one of the things that I find work the best of all of them is a rotating cutting mat. I love these because, first of all, I love doing this. It's a lazy Susan, it is, isn't it? What I love about these is whatever you're doing, whatever you're cutting, I'm trying to find my half made, there it is. Whenever you're trimming anything up, you can line your ruler up accordingly, get everything ready, you get that all done, you sew this, you cut this line, rotate it round, you cut that line, rotate it round, then you just move your ruler. And I can actually show you here, there we go. And I know it looks like I'm starting my demo, but it's just to show you how good this mat is. Because what's really, really good is, especially when you're doing these, you need to have that ability to make sure that everything is kept in place and you get the most accurate cut that you can doing that. So a really fabulous rotating cutting mat, really good quality on it. This one is £32.99 today. 
um, and you, this measures 12 inches all the way around so you've got 1 to 12, 1 to 12 all the way and I think this is also left-handed as well because you've got the numbers going up and you've got the numbers up so going across and across so it is very easy to use you've still got your angles if you need to cut your angles all the way you've got your 45 degree here 30 degree there 60 degree there as well as if you're wanting to cut circles you can then pop fabric on here and free motion the cut all along there circles still terrify me even though I've tried to perfect them but you'd still easily be able to cut your circle out on that as well <clears throat> So really, really lovely product, and I've been using this to make most of my blocks today, which is fabulous, and you'll see then what, how well it works as well. And I'm going to use it all the way through the next demo too, which works really, really, really well. So that's our first product for the day. Now, Creative Grids. If you haven't seen me show you Creative Grids before, here I have got the Log Cabin Trim Tool. This one is, what, what I love about them is they've got these, and I need to find the word for them, I'm going to call them grippy bits. They're a bit like really dull sandpaper on the back, which stops your... <clears throat> I am plagued by this frog today. I apologize. Sorry. <clears throat> Forgive me. Sorry. So a normal ruler that you get is completely flat and shiny on one end. So you can see, as I find the stage lights, you can go there and you can see there's no grippy bits on that. And you can put, when you put it on your ruler, it, it rotates and you can push it. And however you put the pressure on, it does move. But with Creative Grids, you can see that they've got these lovely little grips, not only on the very edge of the ruler all the way around, but also in the ruler. So even there, you may not be able to see it. But as you run your finger over it, uh, there you go. You can see even that bit's raised. Even the QR code is raised on the... There you go, you can see even on that, that bit there's raised. So they've got, where they can, they've created a little bit more texture that when you are trying to move your mat, even the table's moving, but the ruler's not. Look, it's not gonna ever be completely non-grippable because otherwise you wouldn't be able to move it. But what's nice is when that's on there and you're cutting your piece of fabric, you then can just slide the ruler over, attach, cut, slide it over, attach, cut. It's just that gentle bit of pressure makes this a lot more secure than a flat ruler with no grip. You can see that moves around a lot more than it does when it's got the creative grids on there. <clears throat> great, great product on that. And the, not only have you got the creative grids technology on it, you've also got this fabulous log cabin tool. Now, I have demoed this previously before, but I'm going to show you again. And it is such a clever, clever, cool, clever tool. If you want to go back and watch things that I may have not um, demoed today, that show was on the 9th of April. So you can go back and check and see how I've used it in one hour and how I've used it differently in another hour. And you'll see the different ways that the product works. And it is fabulous. First thing I'm going to show you is some finished products. Um, we've got this amazing new collection from Moda called Memoirs. So I wanted to make sure that I had that in today. Oh, is that my curved? That's my curvy one. Sorry, I'm using the wrong... There we go. Brought it over as well. All ready to go and I even started cutting with it. Before I show you that, sorry I forgot to tell you, when you get your ruler, you're also going to get this wonderful set of instructions. So these instructions, do not lose them for several reasons. First of all, this little QR code, if you scan that QR code, you're going to get a demonstration video. So not only will you get how I'm demoing it today, you will get a demonstration video from the actual designer. And the designer is Jean Ann Wright. And you're going to be able to make these three these are the three blocks that they've come up with. But as you use the ruler, you will see different ways of actually making the ruler work and how it works for you as well. This tells you that your block's gonna be eight inches finished. That's the size of the ruler, but it's eight and a half inches at the moment because you've still got your seam allowance. It'll tell you how to start, cut your center square, cut the strips, what width the strips need to be, and it tells you the sequence of sewing everything together. So that's for your log cabin, which will give you that. Then if you want to do three different, if you want to do a quart steps, but sorry, not quart steps, if you want to do a three layered log cabin, it tells you how to do it. So this is a two layered one. So you can see you've got one, two, whereas over here you've got one, two, and three. 
But if you're wanting to do a court steps, put that there, you can see you've got the court steps there again for three, so it tells you how to do that. And then if you wanted to do a half log cabin over here, you'll be able to, it'll show you exactly how to do it. Really, really simple block to do, but this really does make it a lot easier in how to actually pr proceed in doing it. I've made a few examples already. So the first one I did was the ones I showed you on the 9th. And what I love about this, if you do like these colorways, in our previous hour, we had our monitor, was it monochrome? We had our monochrome block here, which is the colors that I use to make these except I think I've used school grey and this is now a dark grey. But that's a really lovely product, that. Go and watch that at our 8 o'clock hour. But you can see just how effective these blocks are using the monochrome. So that, that was one of them. And then this is another one. Totally different colourways. And then that one there. And there we go. Now all of these blocks you will see have got a pop of hot pink in the middle. So these hot pink things, what this was, and I heard this, this may be an urban myth. So this bright pink that I've used is half a meter is three pounds 49. So do check out the website for that if you'd like to use this methodology. And again, the colors that I've used are available in our monochromes color uh, bundle that we had earlier. So that colorway with the hot pink and the monochrome will give you a really nice collection of blocks if you're just wanting to try something um, with a, a fabric that isn't too expensive, just to try the tool and see if you can work it. You can see how effective these are together. And just once you've made them, you, you know, if you haven't got any idea of how you'd like to lay them out, you can see just doing that, how effective it is. Or let's say you've made that and you're thinking, actually, I don't like that very much, I want to do that. Or if you just wanted to do a whole collection of these, you know, there's a d various different ways. But I think when you're testing a ruler, it's always nice to use a fabric that you're actually not too scared to use, um, which isn't too expensive, and you're still going to get a fabulous result. So with the story of the pink, so people ask what the story of the pink is. And what happened was, this is a log cabin block, so it's the traditionally meant to be that middle bit is the hearth of your home. So if mothers were, um, their daughters were getting married, mothers would make them a quilt, and they always had the hearth in the middle being orange or red or pink to show that the home fires were always burning. And it kind of sing, sim, signified that if there was any reason, the daughter could always come home and the home fires were always burning for them to come home. That may, that may be an omen myth, but I really like that sentiment, sentimentality on it. So you'll find that most of the blocks that I do with Log Cabin have always got a bright pink or a red or an orange in it. But even that, just look how effective that is. It's really lovely. And this ruler will make your life a lot easier. Um, I've got a bundle here for, is this the Memoirs bundle or M Morris May? This is the, what was it? Memoirs in Indigo I used. But look how traditional that is and how beautiful that is as a color combination there. And again, you can just see that if you're wanting to do something and try it, but if you wanted to do it like this, for example, there are so many different ways of doing it. And having the darker border on the outside creates a lovely frame. So this is a cushion. This is the edge of a bag. If you can imagine, do, we've all got quilting products that will, uh, sewing products that we take with us to retreats and stuff. This would be fabulous as a, um, the edge of a patchwork bag. Of course, I'd probably put something like that in the middle of it as well. It just, it, there's so many different ways of doing it. Because even if you do that and you think, actually, I'm going to put a different colorway on it. You can see how different each one of them come out. So you can mix and match your colors as you go along, all from one ruler. So you can see doing that, just popping those two there, if you rotate this round as well, you get a totally different look. So if you did these in a black colorway in the same colorway, you can just see the different ways that this ruler would work and the different ways you can play with it as you go. Or maybe you want to do something a little bit more arty, and you want to do that. Or you can have them going in like that. It just, the possibilities are endless on it. You can do how you like, and it's just such a great ruler. 
and the different ways that you can use it is fabulous. And using, you don't need to use the most exciting and beautiful of fabrics like this um, memoirs fabric because this is just absolutely gorgeous. But you can do it with, with solids as well and you can see it's equally as effective. And you're not limited by the design either. You can do so many different things with it. And you can do something quite modern like that, but with really traditional fabrics as well, which I love. And just by rotating these into different positions, you're getting a totally different look as well. So you can see that changes it completely. These two blocks are exactly the same, and you'll see that I've got the black on the outside there, but I then put the black inside there just to see what it would look like, and it creates a totally different block. And even just by rotating them by one rotation, you can see it just changes everything so easily. So that's my, I love this ruler. I think it's really great. So let me show you how I've used it and how you do it. Just double checking, um, I've got everything laid out. So my, these instructions are really, really handy. And what I do even now is I make sure that I've got these cut out, that these are ready to go and to read to make sure I'm doing it in the right order. Because we're all going to get it wrong and we all do it, it doesn't matter. I've made so many of them already, which I love, but it doesn't really matter, we're always going to be prone to making mistakes. So it's always good to have that little safety net on it. Um, and then that there. So there we go, and I've just realized I've cut that top bit thinking I'm cutting a, a log cabin, and I'm not, I don't need to have cut those, sorry. So that's what we're gonna sew on the side there. Now with the colorways, you'll see in the log cabins that I did with this, I popped, whoops, I had this increasing from, that I called my lightest navy, or my darkest navy, middle navy, and my brightest navy. So I was gonna follow that tradition through here, and I was going to have that as my next run, and then that as my outer run. But then I'm thinking, actually, I'm going to do that the other way around. So that's what's great about this. You can just change them as you go. And you've got to be really, as you can tell, I'm being so precise with my cutting on this. And the pattern actually tells you, roughly cut them. And it's called a trim tool, so it doesn't really matter. You can obviously cut these to the exact size if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. But I'm just doing this, and even here you'll see I've got a little bit of fabric coming off there. And what happened is on the, on the, the cut I did this side, I slipped. So I've got this little twir twirly bit there, but it doesn't matter. As long as this is one and three quarter inches, you're fine. You'll easily be able to do that. So I've pressed all my seams open on this one, as you know I love doing. You can press them to one side or the other, it's absolutely fine. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put these two on the sides. So I'm now going to put that on there. And because I press my seams open, I'm going to sew to the piece of fabric that I've got on the bottom, because there are no bumps, humps and bumps to get over with with that. Keeping my quarter inch seam on there as well. I hear we've had a message in from Diane. Good morning, Diane. I hope you're well. Oh, she loves her creative grids. Me too. Oh, but her instructions were getting creased. So she's cut them down to fold them. And then she laminated them. And they still fit in the envelope that they get in. Now, Diane, I'm going to get Joe to do that for the studio because we've already lost one of our set of instructions. That's a really good idea. I love that. Thank you. What a top tip there. Well done, Diane. You've got our top tip of the day there. So I've done that on the one side, and I'm now sewing that on the second side. But please, anybody who's done log cabins in different ways, please pop them onto your social media page. I'd love to see how you've done them. Our sewing, um, we've got Sewing Street TV as well as Sewing Street fans page. Please pop them on there. We'd love to see how you do them, because I think it's so inspiring to see just how creative all of you are. I'm using my lovely June Taylor pressing mat here today, and I've got my lovely iron ready to go. Oh, I am on the iron. There we go. So again, I'm not 
ironing. I'm just pressing, I'm holding it down. Um, that got a little bit smushed in my bag this morning, so we're going to do that again. So this morning, um, I think it was about 2.30 this morning, I was doing these because I think it's really important to get my sleep as soon as I get home and then I wake up nice and early to go and do my demos and get everything ready. All fresh in my mind and then I'm not quite so tired when I get to the studio. So it's like four o'clock in the afternoon for me right now. <laughs> so now all I do, now you don't need to do this, but I did find I like trimming these as I go. And you'll see that there's a lovely dotted line here, which I've lined up with my tool. You can see on the seam line there. You can see there's a dotted line there. I'm lining that up against my seam line because these bits you don't need. So I'm just trimming those off as we go. And then I rotate it around doing exactly the same thing. And again, lining that seam line up there. And trimming that down there. All right, so we've now done that. We're at the point now, this is our second round. So on the ruler here, you'll see there it says round one, and there's round two. Now what that means is when I did round one, I put my pink square, and you'll see it says round one there. I put my pink square there, and then I trimmed there, and I trimmed there, and I trimmed there, and I trimmed there. But what you do is you rotate the ruler all the way round, when you're on round one. But obviously you're cutting, two, you're sewing two at one, uh, two sides at once, you're not doing it all in one go. So I put that there so you can see I match. This route is great because you match several different lines. I match these sewing lines up and I match the central line out. Um, and then I'm cutting that because I've now not attached the top and the bottom. Love this rotating cutting mat. It makes your life a lot easier when you're doing this process. Now, when you're lining the lines up, you'll see that my central block is slightly off. So what I'm also doing, not only lining the central block, I'm making sure I line that line up there and that line up there with our seam line. And then I trim that down. Okay. So now what's left to do in this section here for round two is I'm going to attach that there and I can attach that there. Now, if you want to be more cautious with your fabric, what you would do is instead of cutting like I did, just roughly cutting there, you would then line this up. You can see that I'm a little bit over here. I'm a little bit over here. So when you're doing your, your more precise cutting, you would then trim it down at that point. You wouldn't cut like I did at the very beginning because you will end up having a little bit more waste. But I just wanted to show you the way that you could do it if you wanted to. And this is what was suggested in the Creator Grids things that you roughly cut it that way. So there are ways of being able to make sure you're a lot more conscious with your fabric um, and you get to save a little bit more. And that's a great thing with the Creator Grids. You're not just getting the trim tool and the demonstration, but you're also getting the pattern book and you're getting different ways of doing it. But equally on the social media forums, if you just Google, uh, not Google, if you search on the social media forums, there are various Creator Grids suggestions and tips from other people as well. That's the great thing about buying that product. You'll be able to have that there as well. And it's just such a great brand. I'm so pleased that we've been able to get on board with them. They're lovely. I actually haven't seen a single one of the Creator Grids rulers that I haven't loved. I haven't fallen out with any of them. They've been great. And the, but I think as well, what's really nice, especially when you get a ruler that you've not used before, um, I always find that if I get the ruler and I lo make loads of different blocks because I'm enjoying it, I think that is half the, half the sale for me because I want to make sure that I'm always enjoying the product. And if I'm doing it when I'm, you know, when I, I know I have to make X number of blocks for the show, that's just part of the, part of what we do. But when I know that I've got a product that I actually enjoy using, that instead of just making four blocks, that I've made 40 of them, then I know that I've got the right tool for me. Because as well, you want to know that you're actually going to enjoy making the blocks as well, because it's meant to be fun. And Creative Grids have got this wonderful way of making these jo these look so simple and then they make a ruler that just makes everything really, really easy to do. And the log cabin is no different.
And I won't deny, it took a little bit of time for me to figure out what they meant by the round one, round two, where am I putting my square? And literally, it took me maybe three, four minutes of just thinking, and then when that little moment clicks into your brain, you're going, oh, that's so simple. But it just takes that little bit of moment, because you, you'll see what I mean, that you've got round one, round two, round three, and you're like, huh, what? But then when you figure out, actually, round two goes there, and you're like, oh my goodness, that's so simple. So now you can see you didn't need to trim these up before you started. You can go and do this all the way around. So on the next round will be our last round. I'll show you what I mean by that. So there we go. I've done sides one and side two, lined up with round two in the middle. Now I'm going to rotate my mat around, because I've cut this side and I've cut that side. And now line, line row two up again. There's round two there. I'm making sure I line that stitch rule, uh, stitch line up with that stitch line there. Press the ruler down. And the great thing is, is that you can actually, and I, well, I have done it before. If you are on the wrong round, so let's say you're going back to number one, you're going to have a huge amount to cut off and then you'll actually, something will click in your brain and go, actually, that's not right. And if you do cut it off by mistake, you haven't got that much to unpick to redo it, so it's not a problem. So there we go, we've now done round two. And then round three are these side bits over here. And these are just bits that I've got left over here, which I'm going to put on these sides here. Um, and then I've chosen this dark colour on the edge there. Um, and I am cutting these bigger than I need them. Just that way, then I know that they're right, hopefully. So the fabrics I'm using at the moment are these lovely Moda, um, is it Memoirs? Moda Memoirs Vintage. It's a really lovely colorway there. And I have just picked up my demo for the next one and smushed it up. There we go. Right, so. I've just locked, I've just picked, oh. Crying out loud. Tidying away my beast that I'm about to sew on it. This is the problem why I don't, I shouldn't tidy on the show. Sorry about that. Right. So again, I've pressed my seams open. So I line that up and I go then and I'm stitching that down the one side. It's a lovely little machine, this 550. Do we know when somebody last did a demo on the 550? It wasn't that long ago, was it? And again, have a check on the website as well. It's a lovely little machine, that. And this is a great little starter machine as well. It's really lovely. Also, it's very light, so if you're looking for a machine to take with you uh, to go on a retreat anywhere or a sewing day, because um, some machines are a little bit heavy to take around and some of them you don't feel comfortable putting in the car. But this is a lovely little machine. Did you just say there was somebody using one in their caravan? Oh, wow, what a clever idea. One of my friends, she has a motorhome and she and her husband used to go, well, they will be going away again with um, once everything lifts up. And she loves to take sewing with her, but she can't fit a machine in, but that would work perfectly with that. Oh, what a top tip that. I'd like to bring you a nice huge range of sewing machines to be able to make sure you've got the best options available to you. So all I'm doing here is I'm not lining this up to anything. I'm just trimming off the major excess there. Um, you can see I've just got that little gap there. It doesn't really matter. I'm just getting rid of the excess. So when I sew the next block on, my seams are not too big. So, and the, the you don't need to do that because it'll be buried in your seam line, so it won't matter. But I'm just doing it because I'd like to make sure that it's the easiest for me. And all I'm doing now is pressing these seams open.
And log cabin, it's one of those blocks that you, when you start as a beginner, it is certainly the one that most people will get you doing because it teaches you the concept of quarter inch. It teaches you the concept of you've got to go around in circles to make the log cabin increasing in size. This is the quartz steps, which is slightly different to the log cabin, but you're doing exactly the same methodology that you keep going around in a circle, increasing, increasing, increasing. Because you can see here, we did this... We did those things, now we're increasing this side, and now we're increasing the top and the bottom. And it's all incorporated into one block, and it's just a really nice tool to be able to make sure you're making something really, really lovely and traditional. And you've got all the instructions available, and you've got all those YouTube clips as well. If you scan that QR code on the front of the ruler, you get all the information on it. And Creative Grids have got the most fantastic website as well. If you've got any questions or queries about it, most of them have got frequently answered questions on there. Failing that, you can contact them direct and ask anything you like. And they're all the rulers are made by quilters for quilters, which I think is great because you've then got that you know, every one of us has got top tips of what we do when we're quilting. And it's nice that they've got these designers who know about quilting and know about all the different things that we need and don't need. And they just make it work so well. So all I've done now is I've sewn the last seam on our courthouse steps. This really is a cute little machine. I don't know why I'm sounding so surprised. Alan have got such fabulous product. Right, last two pressings now. Now this one is a little bit more important on the last press because you just want to make sure that everything's nice and flat before you trim your, your block up. You just want to make sure because this will be the last trim that you do. You see, what I've done with this as well is I've tried to make two different blocks out of this beautiful uh, memoirs fabric because I want to show you the different ways that you can actually then use that wonderful colorway of fabric to make different blocks, to be able to create your own quilt designs using these different templates um, to be able to make sure that you're getting the best out of them that you can. So you can see all I'm doing now is I'm just double checking that I've got this as flat as it'll go. That's why another reason why pressing your seams open, your block does get a bit, um, a bit more flat. There we go. So we've now got the block ready to go. I now put this on the, the rotating mat. Now this is where the rotating mat comes into its own. So we know that block three, we're doing round three. So you can see you've got round three is in the middle block there. Um, and you can see now, my seam line is off there, and my seam line is off there, but my block in the middle is lined up perfectly. So I'm just rotating this round to make sure that I'm getting the best combination where the center block is right and my seam lines are all lined up. So I'm happy with that. There are a little bit here which is a bit stretched out, but don't care, it doesn't bother me, it's absolutely fine. No one's gonna give me the block back because I haven't got it lined up, and if they do, I'll happily take it. So, first cut is always the deepest. And the great thing is, is they've got this wonderful technology where the ruler doesn't slip as much. So we rotate that round. We've cut that first seam. There we go. Keep that nice and flat. So there we go, we have now made an eight and a half inch quartz step block, but we've also made, and this is what I love about this block, it, what this about this tool is, I'm gonna just show you, and that was why I chose to do the quartz steps as the middle thing. I've got four of these. Oh, where's the fourth one? So you can tell, you can tell 
by just doing that, you've got the start of a really beautiful quilt there. And then you can just do it. I'll just slide these in a little bit so you can see what I mean. But you can do them however you like, because you see if you, you can just tell how beautiful that colorway goes together. You can then just find a nice block to go in the middle or, or you can then just go and put a solid of each colorway from the lovely bundle that's coming up in a few minutes. You can just put a solid colorway on that. And that is a beautiful little lap quilt for a baby or a little, you know, you, you've got loads of different options on it. So, and it's just a fabulous ruler to be able to just, cause perhaps what you want to do, sorry, as I'm just doing this as I talk, I think I've got a few seconds left. You could put the green on the sides, having the green popping out, and then you could have the flower But look at that. Doesn't that just make the most simple, easy, wonderful little quilt um, suggestion? Really, really lovely. And you don't need a pattern for it because most of us are going around buying patterns, which we love. This would actually then be able to bring out your inner creative person to be able to make something totally unique to you using a fabulous product that is really going to work well for you. Now, I have to say, I'm quite pleased to hear. Did you say how much? How many did you say we had left? We have less than 20 of these rulers left. I'm not surprised. It's a fabulous ruler and you really won't regret um, getting it. And there's so many different options for you there. Um, so just a quick reminder of what you're getting. This is the fabulous ruler. You've got the log cabin trim tool for you there. And you've got the wonderful set of instructions that go with it. And the instructions are very, very detailed. I love Diane's suggestion of making... Um, let me just move that out your way, of laminating them. I think that's genius. But the instructions are brilliant. And what I love about the fact is when they're well used, you know that they're good. And you can see here, you've got the round three, round two, round one, and you've got the half log cabin over here, which shows you how to do it. We haven't even done that in this hour because I think I did that on the, was it the 9th of April? 9th of April hour. I think I did it on that hour. Just go through and double check. Um, but there are so many different options with how you can make all of these. The colorway for these, we'll show you in a few minutes. That was our monochrome co uh, coordinating bundle that we had in our previous hour. And we've also got our Moda, uh, Moda Memoirs Indigo bundle coming up in the next hour, or in this hour, to be able to show you that. So now we have the fabulous curvy tool, which I cannot tell you how much I love these. So, so this one is very similar to the log cabin, but you've got a thin section here and you've got a wide section here. So I'll give you an example here. I think showing it on the white is easier um, because you'll be able to see so, if you're doing round one, you will see your pink block is in round one. I've made my central block pink, as I've mentioned to you before, that was the traditional story I was told, whether it's true or not, who knows. So that's round one for the narrow, okay? So then you would trim your block up accordingly, and this would be round one there. But if you're now doing your wide in round one, which will be this one, you're gonna put your ruler there, wide for round one, going along there, and that would be your wide one. So then you've made that square, and it's so clear on the ruler, it's just getting your head round that wide and narrow. So that is your wide section there, that you would trim accordingly there, and then your narrow section, I should have been able to go and separate those and get them ready for you. <laughs> and then your narrow section there. Then what you're doing is your next row. So your next row of narrow will take you here. And remember when you're trimming it, it's going to allow you seam allowances. So you'll see my next row of narrow 
you don't have the seam allowance in because I've already sewn it. So when you do the narrow, you're going there. So it's just getting your head round that you're sewing the narrow ends that side. And then the other side of it, when you do the narrow on the other, uh, the wide on the other side for round two. So you're now on round two. You can go along the edge there and you can see that that works really, really well showing you where you are. And then lastly, when you're doing your third round, you've got your center square. So what's great is when you're doing the narrow and the wide, it doesn't matter because your central square is going to end up there. So you'll trim that down for the narrow and trim this down with the wide. And the great thing about this um, rotating cutting mat is you've got that in the center, you line that up, you cut that edge, cut that edge, or cut this edge, cut that edge, cut that edge, cut that edge, you haven't touched anything, nothing's moved, it's completely central. So it's a really lovely, lovely tool, this one as well. Um, I've tried to do a couple of colorways for you as well, so you can see the different ways that this works. Um, so you can see that you've got the light coming into the middle here. Again, I've used the monochrome bundle uh, for this, which we'll be showing later, but you can see that it does it that way. But equally, if you do it like that, you've got a totally different block. But if you do it like this, now I don't know whether it's the lighter or the darker that you prefer to see, but you can see the circle growing. So if I rotate these in, you're gonna have a light circle framed with that black border and it's got the curves going like that and the curves going like that whereas if you do it this way it looks a bit more circular that way it looks a bit like stained glass windows as well now the last time I did this one which was the 9th of April um, I showed it this way but I was demonstrating with the Liberty fabric, which we've now sold out of, but I did it the other way around where I had the lights on the wide section and the darks over here. So you can see that that actually works really, really well. And as you rotate that round, you'll see you'll have a very different inner to the outer by having the darks on the outside. So you're not limited in either way that you're doing it, but the colorways there again, just using planes works very, very well. And then th now we've got the silver um, memoirs fabric there, and I'm now going to make the fourth one over here. So it's exactly the same way that you would do a traditional log cabin. I have started by sewing that one there and that one there. I'm not sure I'm going to have time to sew the whole thing for you. So what I'm going to do is what you do then is you sew, you've got your wide section there. Once you've sewn it on, you line your wide section over, helps if I get it the right way around, and that's what it is, it's just getting it the right way around and getting your head around what you're doing. So you'll line up your wide section there, make sure you keep the seam allowance on that side, and you trim this off. Then you're going to add your lights, or my thin section over here, and you're going to rotate your ruler around, you've got your narrow section there, you trim those off there. So exactly the same way as we were doing it on the other way. You're going to start with your wide section. You can start with your, your section there. And remember, you'll have your seam allowance here. So you're lining those, that black block up there with the seams that you've stitched on the first round. And you trim that off there. Then you do the narrow way round. So not only do you rotate the fabric on your lovely mat, but also the ruler. Again, you line that central block up and you trim that down there. And then you just keep going round. So you're doing the wide one again. So now you're doing wide round two, which is that one there. You'll trim that off there. Then you'll put the narrow section on, which is these two here for number two. You line up narrow number two and you trim that down. And then you've got your central block for the final one and then you trim all the way around. On the 9th of April, I did a much more in-depth one of this ruler. I just took a little bit longer on my log cabin than I expected to, sorry about that. But it just shows you the wonderful ways of being able to do it. And don't be scared of playing with it, because when I did this Liberty one, reversing it, doing the light as the, as the wide ones and the dark as the thin, that really changes it. So maybe you'll be able to figure a way it works best for you. 
do take your time with it and play with the ruler and share your pictures with us. We really, really want to see what you make with them because it just makes things a lot more exciting for us. And then if there's a way that actually works really well for you and we see your picture, I might be able to demo it that way. And then you'll be able to be taking part in our demos as well. Oh, we've had a, a picture in from Georgina. Morning, Georgina. So we can't show the picture at the minute though, but she made this, um, we'll, we've um, made, sorry, Georgina made that using this ruler. Is it the, the curvy ruler or the log? The log cabin ruler. Thank you so much for sending it in. Unfortunately, we can't pop it up, but I might just chat with Haley B and see if we can pop that up on our page just to show different ways that we've used the ruler. Oh, pop it on the page as well. Um, what was the lady's name? Georgina, sorry, darling, I forgot your name there for two seconds. There were like eight names going in my head then. So, Georgina, pop it on our Facebook page. I'd love to see it. I'll be off air in about, I'll be able to look at it in about 45 minutes or so. So please pop it on there. I'd love to see it. Thank you. But that's what I love is you're able to share all your pictures and ideas with us. It's great. So I'm going to go through the, the fabric that we actually had on that I was using a few minutes ago. Let's start with the, the, the silver one. This is the Moda memoirs collection this is our silver bundle so I'll, i won't show you every single one but these are the normal half meter lengths there are four different colorways in this collection half meter of each one 28 pounds 99 for each half meter really lovely motor's always got a great colorway so these are new bundles for us we've got them in much bigger bundles but we thought we'd make you a smaller bundle along the way Look at that, it's a really lovely colour combination there. Available by individually as well as by the bundle, but these are the colourways that I used for my uh, log cabin block here. So I can just show you how well they all go together. So that is the, I can't remember what this was, this called trellis, trellis. And then we've got this one as well. This is called Romantic Buds. So you're getting a half meter of each of these colorways in our little bundle that we've got today. If you want to see how they work together, that's a nice little, uh, you can see how beautifully they work together there. And as a log cabin, I think that works really well. That's our four, four half meters together for 28 pounds 99 half meter of each one. And then we've got our indigo collection as well. I was just looking to see if I can see my bundles. What have I hidden them with? So this is our trellis colorway there. Trellis on light blue, we've called that. And then we've got the, this one is just so bright. What's this one called? Bouquet on indigo, look at that. Isn't it funny, every time I hear the word bouquet, I think of highest in the bucket. Oh, I've got this, there we go. This is called Flourish Script. Really lovely, these. And these are sprigs. That with a lovely chartreuse might be beautiful as well, because that the leaf there is almost chartreuse -y. So that is the four, bund the four fabrics you're getting in that colorway. And then this is how I use them for the log cabin to see how well they're on the court steps and how I use them for the log cabin, just to give you an idea of how well they go together. Obviously that hot pink in the middle is sold separately in our bundle collection. So do check our website out for that one as well. We've also got this fabulous navy bundle here. Hamel? We only have five of these left, goodness me. What an amazing bundle it is though as well. So I'll show you that whole bundle there. These are eight, bu uh, nine bundles there, half meter of each one. So I'll start over there. You've got the sprigs on the end. That is beautiful. The yellow and the red is gorgeous as well, but I'm gonna open this one simply because I think this is one of the best fabrics that have ever been made by Moda. Look at this. Oh, I think this is called Ephraim College. Sorry, I know we don't have these individually, so you can Google this. It is definitely Ephraim College, and that's E-P-H-R-A something. You can go and find that on there, but I just loved the detailing on this. 
absolutely love this colorway. Really nice, that. Gorgeous. But again, such great quality, such great fabrics, and such gorgeous designs. Got to love Moda. And I've now ruined the order of this bundle, and I don't mind, because it's the gorgeous, gorgeous combination here. We had five of these up on the on the show before we start before I started showing you. £66.99 for the nine half meter pieces in there. Each one of those is a half meter. And they're very limited stock. And as you know, with Moda, once they're gone, they're gone. You can never get them again. So don't hang around. If you will always regret the fabric you've left behind. And you know that's true. Lastly, I'm just going to show you the last two bundles we had in the previous hour. This was called the Monochrome Bundle Collection. Um, these are one, two, three, four, five. They are six uh, different colors there. You've got the ivory, black, white, dark gray, Elephant or silver? Silver and vanilla. So those are the colorways that we got there. It's a half meter of each piece there. But you see, oh. Oh, now you remember I said to you, making your bundle go further. Look at that. Those two together would work really well. There's three meters here, half meter of each piece on that. And that is $19.99. But it is good, actually, that is a really good idea, being able to show, if you're wanting to make your moda go a little bit further, that coordinating colour goes really well. Because this moda, how much is this moda bundle? Was it 28 $28.99 for the motor bundle, but now that was two meters. But then with these three meters here for $19.99, you would just extend the, the, and you can see how beautifully they go together as well. There we go. Gosh, I'm spoilt for choice there. Really, really lovely collection of fabrics there. And I've had a wonderful day with you all. So, so pleased. And I've been on the truck now for three days in a row and I've loved it. I haven't slept, but I loved it. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to climbing into bed and having a nice long snooze this afternoon. Thank you all so much for joining me. We've got the lovely Vicky with us tomorrow. Um, we've got fabrics at 8 a.m. And we've got the amazing Stropology um, ruler, that giant Stropology ruler. Um, Vicky is going to be showing you how to use that. And then EPP and FPP tools at 10 o'clock. I am really looking forward to that because I love EPP and FPP. I love them both. And some fabulous products there. Thank you all so much for your time today. Go well. Bye-bye.